Welcome back to the sixth installment of the System Podcast. Myself, Steve, and Tom sat down on the 9th of November to wrap up the Spring Carnival and explain how profitable it has been for especially the System, but also the Hustler Squad. But before that, we did speak about Dabble very heavily and especially around the fact that they are trying to get as many influencers as possible to market and advertise their platform as well as using a geniusly hidden feature that many people may not actually be aware of. We couldn't not mention Bedar and their massive explosion into the betting market in Australia. We speak about their promotions and what everybody has been talking about, but we delve into the mathematics around the marketing and the liabilities that this company had to basically consider to blow up and successfully lure in a massive amount of customers in a short period of time. We reflected on how the system was actually created. And finally, we spoke about how despite numerous attempts to teach people how to hedge their multis, especially when in a position on the last leg, we saw another punter on a Facebook page this week throw away the chance to make at least 50K guaranteed again on nature strip as always if you have any questions for us here at the system or the hustler squad you can reach out to our instagram dms if you don't have instagram there are plenty of other ways to get in contact with us all relevant links will be in the description including our 2000 member free chat which we encourage anyone to jump into if they're curious about what goes on in our communities we hope you guys enjoy this one and do not be shy if you have any questions about anything please reach out Alrighty, lads so we're back again for another potty Obviously, today is a Wednesday. We usually tip on Wednesdays, but we've taken the day off for sustainability purposes. And also, as well, we thought it'd be good to kind of recap what's going on in the betting space. It's just been a massive, massive spring for not only you know the system and the hustle squad, but just the whole industry. There's been a lot of things pop up that we'll discuss today. Better, obviously, is going to be um, a big topic. But I thought we'd start off this podcast with... Something that I cannot stop seeing, whether I'm scrolling Twitter, whether I'm on Facebook, whether I'm on Instagram, whether I'm watching podcasts, and that's Dabble, right? They have got their finger in that many pies at the moment. They're trying to get every single podcast to promote them. They're getting, you know, influencers like Angry Dad, so on and so forth. And just thought maybe we could dive a little bit deeper into what Dabble actually do, how they're making money, and why why are we seeing them everywhere? So maybe, JP, you wanted to start us off. Why, Why is Dabble everywhere? What are they trying to do? Yeah, so they br- they briefly um, came up on our last podcast and they were actually mentioned in a, in a snippet from one of our subscribers who mentioned this little function that they had, which we want to clarify. But in terms of what they are, they're a bookie. Um, I 100% have not never used it. Like, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it's very clear as to how they're working. Um, you can follow a number of tipsters on those apps. Tipsters, I mean, at the end of the day, they're just people. Anyone, you can follow anyone. Exactly, and I guess they're... They're making use of this influencer style popularity and then combining that into betting to make themselves money. So, what so they, how do, do they do it? Like, what, yeah. what, what actually is Dabble? Yeah, so it's a bookie. And then through that, they're now chasing all kinds of affiliates who tip on their platform and then you can just follow their tips. So, for example, they'll, they'll get people who have a podcast who basically just tip winners blindly and Dabble might pay that person a sign up code, or pay them a fee. Um, as well as giving them a sign-up code and how bookie affiliation works. Now, I don't know the intrinsics of their deals, but generally speaking, all bookie affiliation will be either a CPA model, meaning you get a fee per sign-up, as well as a revenue share. So, for example, or and or. So, for example, if Steve signs up on my link, he, I get $50 and then I get 30% of his losses for the whole lifelong of his account. Now, I know that's something that another bookie has done. I'm not sure if this is what Double's doing. But how it works is, okay, on this uh, platform, you have a functional ability to be able to press hide on any bet that you want. So what you're seeing on these apps, right, you're following, let's say, Angry Dad or, I don't know, another person that maybe... Podcast that you like, yeah, yeah. And you're saying, okay, well, Angry Dad, look at all his tips on his wall. You can see his past history. But Angry Dad has the opportunity to press hide bet if he tips a loser. So someone coming to that profile is going to say fuck, look at this. They could they could hide all their losses if they want to. And they've seen 10 wins in a row. And of course, you're going to follow him. So they watch a video, Angry Dad's making, like he's done it, some video it, watching, eating Tim Tams or fucking yeah. having a punt. And then they're like, oh, I might, I want to see what he's betting on. You go to his Dabble page or whatever. Yeah. And then you go on his page and they're just all winners because 
you can hide losing bets. Yeah, spot on. So if I'm if I'm a tipster on Dabble, I can hide any bet that I want. There's literally a feature that says, "Do you want to hide this bet?" Now I'm not sure if that's only available for losing bets, um, but. It, that's what it is. It, the feature has been put there for that reason, and it wouldn't take a rocket scientist. You need it. I know the way you explained it was a little bit better the other day when you sent through a voice recording to our chats. You said, "Well, how would you, if you're a bookie, how would you want to make the most money, and why would you want to show people like losing essentially?" So yeah, well, if you can hide the downside of your exactly. like of the business, right? At the end of the day, people know, or well, most people know, you, you're going to lose money gambling, right? And most people don't care, but if you find yourself on a platform or following somebody and you can't see they're losing bets, it's very easy to forget about that. And it's very easy to be like, oh, well, some people might not even know about the hide yeah. function. They might just think, you know, this guy's a mm. fucking genius. This podcast is elite. They 100%. just keep tipping winners. I saw their TikTok reel where they hit this multi, like they're all riding this multi together. Wow, they've hit a 60 to one multi. I'm going to jump on their double, jump on their double. There's no losing bets. Like these guys are geniuses. Yeah. Like this is elite. Start following or start tailing or however it works. And then... Bets start losing and then you go, hold on, why why can't I see the losing bets on here? And then, again, you obviously touched on how these people get paid and, you know, Dabble going really hard at everybody at the moment, yeah. trying to get as many people as possible to promote their app. But, like, you'd have to think about it if your favorite podcast or your favorite influencer is someone that's telling you to use Dabble. If you knew, and I don't, we don't know for a fact if they are, but imagine if they're getting a percentage of your losses, like... How, I don't know how that sits with people. Like imagine encouraging people to join an app so that you can get paid for them joining an app. But not only that, you're going to get a percentage of their losses if that was the case. Why would you tip winners? Well, okay, you can go down that real sort of morbid pathway of, okay, <laughs> we're going to go fucking tip losers for everyone. Well, not deliberately, people, but who cares? There would be people out there that do that and Facebook groups are run on that. Like there's yeah, multiple yeah, yeah. groups that do that. But let's just take the the other way and say hey these guys are just young blokes who are who love punting who who want to run a podcast know what their audience likes yes however they don't give two fucking shits what happens to their audience they're not running a service like we are where we have a refund policy or we we have an accountability to make our subscribers money like their subscribers aren't paying them all they're doing is watching their podcast signing up to dabble so they have no obligation to do anything apart from do their podcast and fill their contractual agreement with a bookie which yeah, says put dabble post your fucking or thing there uh, correct yeah, yeah, okay. so the aim here is for double to get exposure and the the payment is a payment to the individual or the podcast for doing that do you That's reckon it. the individual or the podcast like think deeply about how they're getting paid or where the money's See, coming from or th- this you know, is the thing we want to try and get through to these influencers and i think 2023 for me personally and obviously you guys are going to be part of that i would like to think is to literally create an army doing the opposite which is like people doing what the bookies don't want you to do and bet and instead of saying hey uh sports bet or blue bet or someone pays you a thousand dollars for a sponsorship of your podcast why don't we pay you to do the opposite and help punters? And yeah. and we're going to be doing kind of sponsorships and stuff like that, looking for influencers who want to make a positive difference rather than either the negative difference or the I don't care difference. It's also funny um, as well because that's such a saturated market, right? Everybody's promoting bookies. Imagine like it's so niche. Like what we do currently is pretty niche. And I've seen the first influencer that I've seen in ages speak about gambling in a negative form is anabolic gabe and i know you've had prime some, train you know and prime well, train yeah. i know you've sent some chats uh, voice messages to prime train had a bit of back and forth but that they're the first people that i've ever seen speak about the negative effects of it properly and they're guys that obviously use their influence in a in a massively enormous way you know helping people with their training or helping people with their diet or yep. you know they're people that have in, influence and they chase clout which is elite but they're doing it in a, in a way yep. that's helping other people and yep. Like, I would love to have someone like that oh. associate with us and be like, look, guys, we, we're not pro gambling at all, but we understand young lads do it. And if you're going to go down this path, maybe you should look at your match betting or following a structured system so that you can still enjoy the punt, but not fucking turn into a full degenerate for the rest yeah. of your life. Well, we got back to the bench TV officially on board. It's yeah, not public sick. yet, but that'll be a massive like part of next year, what we do in this space. And we want to obviously get more people, Anabolic Gabe, uh, Prime Train, Two very, I would say, aware individuals. And I know for a Definitely. fact that they will be no chance to ever sign a bookie affiliation agreement. And that's great. And we want to now sit down and, and have a chat to them about that. But 
while we're speaking with bookies, and I'm I'm yeah. very wary that Steve hasn't Steve said a has word yet, just sitting there fucking. No, I'm all good. I'm just enjoying this chat. <laughs> hanging to on to the coattails. It's actually a great chat. But yeah. I was thinking, we're still on the topic of bookies, and obviously it's a saturated market at the moment, and a very notable new bookie in the space yep. is Bet R, and everybody would know that they were offering 100 to 1 for the Melbourne Cup odds, and they're offering you know 100 to 1 for the World Cup and for the NBA and for the AFL, NRL. I mean, Steve had a really good discussion about the liability that, yeah. you know, these bookies would mm-hmm. have on those kind of markets. But then when you think about it in like a greater context, and I read something saying that Better tried to buy PointsBet. So they went to PointsBet who have like 200K customers and they said, we'll give you 300. Is that all they have? Yeah, something like that. So, and they're like, we'll give you 300 mil for, for all your customers. And they said, no, nah, fuck it. So supposedly... The, the thought process was, well, we were going to offer points bet 300 mil to get 200K customers. How can we get 200K customers with 300 mil? Let's offer up all these outrageous markets. Supposedly, I read um, Rob Waterhouse tweeted something saying that he reckons better I've got close to 300K new accounts. Oh, no, they signed up 160,000 people in their first three days. Yeah, in their first three days. But, but apparently, like th- two to weeks now, ago. like yeah. a tweet a couple of days ago saying that they got 300K members. Now, I'm not sure how many of them are going to be legit ongoing customers. A lot would have been just for that. But, you know, that's how they've entered the space. And maybe Steve could like dive into a little bit of like the liability. Like what is that? Because I remember going through the numbers. I'm like, fuck me, if Doville Legend wins. Well, let's clarify like- what exactly the promotions was. For anyone listening who doesn't know, yeah, yeah, the, okay. they, what did they offer? They had $101 on every single runner in the cup so their, their promo as soon as they $10 launched maximum. they're like yeah you, you can have a $10 bet the first promo they had was you can have a $10 Animo. bet on Animo in the Cox Plate at 21, 21 to 1 odds yeah. which is 10, 10 times the odds of any other bookie and that one so for starters that's uh, lots of people would look at that as a negative that's a huge win in my opinion for Bet R they've got all these punters now that just put 10 bucks in their account or whatever now they've got 210 what an experience I'm going to start punting I know heaps of my mates were sending in screenshots of their bets or placing their bets or for the whole spring carnival we're using better because they had outrageous promo so they've obviously jumped into the market and made it a splash but you know what what kind of liability are they looking at for something like that if, if you have yeah, like stacks. 50k customers sitting there with 10 bucks on the favorite for the melbourne cup they're sitting there fucking fingers and toes crossed surely yeah. hoping that doesn't i mean it's it's straight up genius what they've done like everyone's been questioning better going Oh wow, well, better did this. They've lost so much on Animo. They're going to lose so much on the World Cup, on the AFL, NBA, whatever. But like, that's all part of their plan. Like anything, everything that's happened, I'm pretty sure with better, they would have seen it in their sort of script of it's how we're going to launch this system. All like the, all the marketing ploys that came out, whether or not they were potentially marketing in an illegal way or a moral way or whatever. Like they knew exactly what they're doing. Um, and they've created a massive stir because of it. They've got publicity, whether that's positive or negative. They've created a massive stir. Everyone's talking about it. My mates are talking about it. Everywhere you go where guys are gambling, they're all using this Better app. Have you got Better? Have you got Better? It's a massive talking point. And yeah, they do have a massive amount of liability. Like they would have lost an absolute stack. I was trying to estimate. I don't even want to put a figure on it um, because, you know, I just, you know. Apparently there were only that. on that same tweet, somebody, not somebody, I think I'm pretty sure it was Rob Waterhouse again, said that, Supposedly, better said that they had thirteen hundred accounts on Gold Trip. So that's a lot. So, yeah, so whatever that is, thirteen. What did they have? Thirteen hundred accounts times ten bucks at one hundred and one to one. That's only one point three mil, I suppose. Mate, so, it's yeah. fuck. It, trust me, it's peanuts. They, yeah, no, of peanuts. course. Well, they at, at the end of the like, day, they wanted to buy a points bet, couldn't get it. Yeah, so like, fuck the, it, we got three hundred mil the, to blow. How are yeah, we going to get two hundred thousand customers? The guy running it is uh, Matt Tripp. I think he's yeah, the yeah. owner. He's been around this for. I don't know mm. how long. Don't quote me. I think I'd say twenty years. I think he was involved with the Bet Easy buying of the sports bet sale of Bet Easy, and yeah, I think he was involved or there, or whatever. But he knows exactly what he's doing. He understands the industry inside out, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that. Okay, I think they got a fine for something. It was one point five million fine. Yeah, don't quote peanuts. me again. But this is all factored in because they yeah, would see. They know okay, they're, they're on the you know they're in the grey area. Yeah, like, we're going to do this, and that's going to make X revenue, and this is going to cost X per customer, yeah. and that's going to outweigh what we're going to make from it in the long term. So if, it's just marketing costs. If you have a look at this, so I've just googled sports bets profit in 2021. Sports bets profit was 369 million after tax for last year, right? 
Better have come in with a pretty clear idea. They want to be the next sports bet. That's been their yeah, message. Yeah, of course. They're like, we're coming in. We're not coming in to be a, you know, a low ranking bookie yeah, no. with a small market share. We're coming in no. to take over sports bet. That's been sort of their message. And they've been offering promos that are just way more absurd than even sports bet offer sort of thing. So they're living up to that so far. They're taking a bit of a hit at the moment. But if you're any business, right, you're not expecting to make profit in your first, I don't know, two, three years. Like you're just well, sort yeah. of- Not like, if you're scaling that large. Not like if you're scaling that large. If, yeah. you're in a, if you're in an industry that probably is never going to stop. They like, exactly. They will, I reckon they will profit though. Yeah, no, this they year. will. Yeah, I but yeah. the way yeah. you have to look at it is yeah. the, the gambling ain't stopping tomorrow, yeah, next week, in six yeah. years. Or All you have to do is get them years. across. And Unfortunately, yeah. humans will gamble f- All forever. you have to do is get them across. So, exactly. So so even, even if they said, all right, we're happy to lose half a billion- and then in 12 months' time, they're the next sports bet and they're making 400 million a year. They're going to make back yeah, it's their liability. Isn't it? It's a fair investment. And then they're going to be getting half a billion or 400 million profit the year after, the year after. And then after two years, they've already broken even. They're already flying. Plus, so. they're in other countries. Like, obviously, Jake Paul is like mm. the face of it in, I'm pretty sure it's his. his. Yes, he's like, that. yeah, it's so in the US and they're doing like, they're focusing on micro betting, which is like the new craze where you can bet on like every drive in the NFL or, you know, every single point in the tennis instead of having to ring up you know the laws are very different in the Jeez. US so they're like every single player you know the next bucket in the NBA somebody gonna get a foul like the, yeah, the thing that, the things that you can bet on there is fucked but like they, they've come in with a bang and they're you know they know exactly what the fuck they're doing yeah. and it's gonna be interesting to see the landscape plus they're in you know they've come into Australia they know that we are degenerates we're the worst gambling nation in the world so there's not a better country in the world that you would want to get no. your like you'd want to make a splash and get a market share because so one thing we're i want to mention donators. Right? one thing i want to mention and this is this is the ingenuity of ingenuity um, of better <laughs> whatever the word is so everyone was sort of laughing during the world cup right uh, sorry during the melbourne cup dovil legend you know was paying 4 bucks or whatever it was and everyone's going wow well, if dovil legend wins they're going to make a stack rah, 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 rah. And better, obviously, have taken this into consideration. They would have done their risk assessment. They would have done their cost benefit, whatever it would have been. And they would have gone, all right, we can take the risk and let however many... If there's 1,300 people on Gold Trip, there probably would have been... 50, uh, on, that 50, thread, reckon, on, uh, on that thread, they said 40K. 40,000. So 40,000 people on Doville. So that's... What is that? That'd be not a massive liability, but still... No, a, 4 million, eh? 4 million, yeah. Around about. No, four, no, more than that. 40,000 40, times, times 10 is what, 400K? Yeah, 40 million, yeah. Fuck, is that all? So that's, that's, not, that's not massive, but... But they're hedging that too, Yeah, of course, they're, they're hedging laying it off. Like at, call to the, at the call to the card at Crown, they they placed a huge bet on They were betting on legend tab, 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 right? tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. everywhere. The yeah. Betfair, and they were Betfair laying it off. suspended for about two and a half to three hours on the Tuesday, on the Monday night. I don't know if that has anything to do with yeah, it. Yeah, that, that never happened. That's I've weird. never seen like, that. Yeah. That's, I've never seen that. Well, they were trying to get like, they were trying to get real big bets on, like back, obviously back mm. in Dover Legend. Like they were yeah. trying to get huge bets on at other bookies. But yeah. I was watching Betfair on Cup Day and it just kept, blowing out like it yeah, no, it was went, obvious that better had been like trying to hedge their position weeks in advance you know every time there was money there on betfair they were taking it around like really? 340 340 yeah. like obviously trying to lay off yeah, some yeah, of their of course, position yeah. and then it blew out the and then and then yeah right before the jump you could almost get five bucks on betfair so the damn wall had broken and mm. better weren't matching all these bets now and i'm sure some of the the you know the money at five bucks would have been people like fuck it i'm just going to get my bet matched and you know cash out my position but, yeah, but probably wouldn't small. be a large portion. but even even so so at this i think it was monday night you sent through that text and it was if you'd had yeah, if you had no. backed over legend they were offering you 150 dollars in bonus bets yeah so I I had a look at what it jumped at and at four dollars seventy four it jumped at bet Betfair starting price Doville Legend. So if you had backed it ten dollars, if you had backed it with better, you would have won a thousand ten bucks if it won. So you could have laid it on Betfair with a four dollars seventy four Betfair starting price price and guaranteed yourself one hundred ninety dollars guaranteed. That's at four dollars seventy four. Yeah. If it was three eighty or whatever yeah, you were saying, oh, mate, was, you would have been getting was close. Three sixty for a good twenty four hours as well. So, so you're looking at two sixty. So you would have been looking, yeah, two fifty, two sixty, potentially three hundred guaranteed if you had backed it. So yep. what did Betfair, what did better go and do? They went and offered people cash out your bet for one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets. Fucking genius. Yeah. But instead, instead of the punter going, I can go and hedge this for a guaranteed 300. Which, to be fair, a small portion. One in, not, one in would 20 do would do that. Of course. No, less. I less one in 100 probably, would do that. Yeah. One in 100, but, yeah. bet fair, but essentially, what that's saying is that, you know, better could potentially be losing $300 per bet here. Instead, they're going to offer 150 in bonus bets, which we know is 12% in real real monetary terms sort of thing. So they're yeah, losing... So bookies are assuming that a, t- a, book, uh, a customer would 
win 12% yeah. across their lifetime of any bonus. So let's just clarify that. So they would yeah. expect to lose 150 by 12% around about, not obviously accurate numbers. Mm. What's that? $15? $18. 18 bucks. So yeah. they would expect... So they're saying we'll give you 150, 150 bonus because we know in the long run that our massive punters will turn that into $18. Yeah. Correct. Per, that's what we per 150. Yeah, so per 150. Someone might win a grand, someone might win yeah, zero. Most people, well, the other thing, is, the other thing as well is like they're giving it to you in bonuses because Correct. you can't withdraw it. You have it. to gamble. So you've got to punt it. So, yeah. so there's your two options. You're a gambler. Or the, it's, and it's the same two options for better. It's the same two options. They go, all right, we can risk potentially $250 or $190 per customer in the long term is backed over legend on average, long term. Or we can just give them eighteen dollars, and they've gone. Fuck, we'll just give them eighteen dollars. There would have been so many people that would have cashed out that bonus. Well, I was value. in the Platinum Squad Discord. Someone's like, "That's not a very smart way to get punters to take it." But I guarantee you that people would have taken it. And do you know the thing is, there'd be so many people out there who took it, and they'd be happy with their decision. They'd be thinking that I've made the right decision. Yeah, fuck it, now I can turn it into four grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I got more control <laughs> over it because yeah. it's not just all in the it's one. Ten, course. fifteen dollar bonus multis. Yeah, they would have just thrown it all on there. And then they like, had their fun and got zero bucks out of it. Betters turned this genius marketing ploy and just mitigated their risk massively yeah, by doing 100%. it. And, and they're laughing. It yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And it's like when you see that, and we always, you know, we're the fun police, right? That's what everyone calls us. Like. Why would you, if you're on the fucking Melbourne Cup favorite at 101 to one, why would you lay it off? Like it's ten dollar mm. bet, mate. Like yeah. you can make a grand, but the flip side of that is, yeah, but you could make a grand. But if you lay off your position every time, like we say, like all the Hustle Squad members are doing, you always make profit. So mm. this is the difference. There's no luck. There's no chance. You always make profit. So sure, at the 400, when Doval Legend looms up, and you're like, you, home, this is gonna it? fucking shit in. I cannot believe yeah. they've given me 100 to one, and then bang, blows a tire, doesn't win. <laughs> You've done your 10 bucks, and you're like, oh, it was only 10 bucks, mate. You gave up the opportunity to make like 270, yeah. 280, mm. gone. And better once you to think. It's only 10 bucks, so you put another fucking 20 in on the day yeah. of the next race. Yeah, Same of course. Shit. But it's, it's like, and the other thing as well is like, there'll be people that, because they offered it on like six different markets, right? So if you're on like Brazil or France in the World Cup and they make it to the quarters or the semifinals, or even if they're in the final, sure, they might be $1.50 favorite. But that is your opportunity to lock in mm. 400 bucks, all right? And if you have an opportunity to lock in some profit on two, three, four of these chances that you've had 10 bucks on, you'll... Instead of hoping that one of them wins yeah. and making a grand maybe minus your 60 bucks you've outlaid, you make two, 300 every selection you make, you're going to be further in front. Yeah. Like, it's, well, a, it's an absolute no-brainer. Unfortunately, people brainer. will be watching this and they'll literally be in the comments saying, mate, it's only 10 bucks, not that deep. Yeah. But it's not like, those deep. are the people that always will lose. And these are the people that essentially keep this industry in business. So well, what you need to understand is why, why is the bookie offering you that promo? Well, to get you on like the they're not, yeah, but lose. they're not doing that because they're like, oh, this guy's gonna fleece me. Like, what a genius having ten dollars on this market. They know, like, they know. So when you have an opportunity to lock in profit, you, like, you need to be doing it. And the smart punters would have, and in the Dobel Legend example, they they come out on top. Yeah, like, there would have been like maybe. Uh, I mean, we didn't promote better because we offer uh, sustainability, but there are a number of members who eventually got onto it and they cashed in two hundred eighty bucks, two hundred sixty bucks. There was a number of people in our chats. And they didn't care. And they were so happy after the race because mm. they, they... Well, the no-brainer play for someone that knows what they're doing. Yeah, they went on a calculator. Absolutely, you could just go fucking hammer the favorite. I'll have Literally. 10 bucks on that at stupid odds. Make it Lay it off, take my money, move on. Yeah, it, it would have taken you maybe a minute and a half to lay it. Put the money in Betfair, lay it. If you had, a, if you had a live laid it as well, I reckon... I, I laid it around with, I videoed... Oh, yeah. It only got to 240 live. 240. Interesting, so, yeah. If yeah, it went any shorter, up. like yeah. it, I was, I remember seeing that going. Oh, of course, we another, had a nice ride. Course, yeah. Another fifty meters, yeah. another fifty meters. It probably would have gone into like one eighty, and then yeah. it would have been fucking. I was a literally piss just take. like thinking about all the comments. I'm like, oh my god, every <laughs> every mug's gonna win. This sucks, but then, <laughs> this then sucks. it got rolled. <laughs> yeah, there's unfortunately, and, you had and, and there was well. a, <laughs> <laughs> one better. Year, How about the, year, the yeah. one on the weekend? Someone sent it into our chat. I have no idea who the punter was. He had a well. How much did you have in that multi? 50 at 20, 2001 or something? Was this for? Oh, 94K with Nature Street. What was, the, what was oh, the, the, That was the last leg, Nature Street. It was winning with $96,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. Nature was $1.81 on Betfair. Mate, if, okay, let's clarify this, right? People will be like, oh, who has 50000 okay, liability, Let's also right? clarify so that I don't get rinsed on TikTok for the next month. We don't have the exact odds, but we'll put the bet we'll slip up We'll put the here. bet slip <laughs> yeah. after the fact. <laughs> Fuck we'll it up. After the fact <laughs> yeah. so that you... Don't think we're it's reading It's not sitting on it there and, floating uh, in front of us at the moment. Tell yeah. lies and shit. Yeah. We're all dyslexic <laughs> or something, right? So, yeah. So it was like around. I think it was a ninety-four thousand dollar collect with Nature at the last yeah. leg, fifty dollar bet. Let, let's just say, yeah, ninety-five k, right? 
let's let's go. It was a dollar eighty on Betfair. Let's just go even two dollars and just round it up. So for every dollar that you lay on Nature Strip, you gain one dollar if it loses, and you lose one dollar from your potential profit if it wins. So if you were to put forty eight k on the lay at two dollars, you would take forty eight k minus commission off that if Nature Strip wins. Uh, if it loses, sorry. And if Nature Strip wins, you would walk away with forty eight k profit. So you've essentially got yourself in a position where you could have made 48K. Obviously, that punter would not have 50K liability to play with. So people would be like, oh, what's the point anyway? So how would you go? If you put 1,000 on it, you make 1,000. Well, I was going to say, 2, that's 000, you make 2, that's what I was saying in and the free like, chart. As much as he could have put on that bet, he would have guaranteed himself but that a was position. Remember that multi and that guy, I think it was for the, the first Nature Strip race. I think it might yeah. have been the same one. And you were speaking to him and he's like, yeah, I understand that I could lock in profit here, but he's like, I don't want to spend more money to you know lock this in. He didn't want to put up the capital to to lay the bet right. So he saw it as he was having to spend more money yeah, that's to hedge his bet. But it's like, no, no, no. You're basically cashing in money by sp- like, but yes, you have to put it up there, but yes. you're going to guarantee profit. Yeah, you are spot on there because that's a massive deterrent for some yeah. people with Betfair because they're like, well, look at the liability. Yeah, but it's and it's like you know, but you don't understand it. You're not. Yeah. Ga- you, this it's, is this yeah. is the the gambler's mind. You're not gambling that. Like you've already got the bet on one side. You're simply locking in profit. Yes, you might have to lock away your two, three, you four grand, touch whatever it, for it is, a couple of hours. Yeah. for yeah. two hours. Yeah, yeah. Which for thirty course, seconds yeah. comes back in your account, and then you get it back on Monday when you withdraw it from Betfair. But. That, that's how you're making profit. You're not gambling. And people like have this fixation with parting with their cash. Literally. Like they feel like they're losing it. And it's like, no, no, no. So but when the, you're in that position... That's the saddest part is they are parting with their cash by letting it ride and sitting in all or nothing. And now he's got zero when yeah. he could have made fucking up to 50 And you can clip this, clip this for TikTok. If you are in a position where you have one leg left in your multi, please send us a DM. Literally, we'll help like, you out to fucking we'll, do it. We'll, we'll set it up for you. Like we'll show you exactly what to do because... I'm so sick. Like that guy could have made fifty dollars at two thousand to one, whatever. Like well, even imagine 80. being in a position. I, I said in the free chat, I'm like that guy. You guys, everyone in this chat needs to understand that guy's had fifty grand on Nature Strip in that race. How many of you in your right mind would do that? Nobody. Hmm. That's what he's done on the last leg of his multi, and he's got zilch for it. So this is the beauty of Betfair, which I don't. A lot of people, obviously, a lot of our listeners and a lot of our community completely understand it, and that's that's awesome. But people don't actually understand what Betfair is and the fact that you can back against a horse. So there's even races with that Nature Strip race, right? A lot of the bookies, I know Ned's often offer this um, offer this market where you can back the field, yeah, right? So you can be, it'll be like Nature yeah. Strip versus the field or Animo versus the That's field. The same thing. Or it's the exact same thing. That concept is what Betfair offers you where you can back the field. That's what laying means. You're laying the field against the horse it's that the you're backing. It's back. the opposite. It's the Literally. opposite of backing. The backing easiest way laying. to think of it is you're just turning into the bookie. You're yeah. turning so you're into just saying, all right, hey yeah. guys, I'm offering $1.85 for Nature Strip. How much? And you can choose how much you want to accept mm. and then someone will place a bet with you. That's yeah. and this is so. What, but like you look at Ned's and they'll be like, if Nature Strip's at two bucks or something, to back, they'll give you the field at like $1.60, which is just stupid because it should be $2, right? Like if it's 50-50, um, should be two dollars. I'll give you a dollar sixty. That's the beauty of Betfair. Betfair, you can get those the the good value. Yeah, you, you can get lock in the two or... dollar eighty five, dollar ninety. You'll get a massive more, or you get you'll get the fair value sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so for people who don't quite understand, when when we say you can lay a horse, you can hedge yourself out of a multi. Think of it. You've got Nature Strip. You've got it. You've got a potential to win ninety eight grand, and then you just go and put fifty grand well, on the field with it, Neds. It, you can do that on Betfair. It's the same as cashing out. It's the exact same. People don't get that because they're putting the money in they think it's not the same it's exactly the same as cashing out so mm. that you person a, you essentially just get a had, slightly less favorable well because result. The, yeah but because it, it, essentially what the book is doing there is they're hedging your bet correct. and they're just taking 10 percent or 15 well, the percent reason of it. he didn't have a cash out was because he had a, a 25 percent power yeah. play on all uh, these markets okay, so they yeah. take the cash out off so if that guy had a 50k cash out do you reckon he would have taken it Made of course, I fucking would hope it wouldn't have been fifty k. It wouldn't have well, been. No, they'll, 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 they'll rip you off. Like yeah, they'll rip you off. It would have been thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was a dollar eighty. Probably like forty. If you, to 45 if you don't know yeah. how to use Betfair and you and you're in a position like that, fuck, like you'd have to be. Met. The better question is not would you cash out. Would you have whatever the cash out value is? I don't know. It's like simplistic, but say they're offering him forty k cash out in that situation. Are you willing to put? If you did cash that out, would you put that forty k? on nature strip to, to make no, the same return no and of no course chance. you fucking wouldn't so in that situation it is a no-brainer yeah. to take the money like yeah. it's a full-blown no-brainer and even though we've just spoken about betfair like we make it sound super easy it is a complex thing and a lot of people fuck it up if they do it on their own so just be careful we're not telling everyone to just go out there and start laying things because uh, i mean people have been 
um, yeah, well, we try and teach Betfair. Well. Like, I, yeah. I was doing Betfair for five years and once met, lost uh, 3,800 on one race by double laying it. <laughs> was that the, yeah. No, and that you, was a different one. That was a different one. I put right. it, it was at Mooney Valley. I, I promise you, no, I promise you it was a glitch on Betfair. Yeah, no, this is the one I was, yeah, I remember. I put 2,000 on a laid, I think it was. He called me, he's like, just lost 3,800. I'm like, what, what have you done? And like, I tried fighting been, him for it. I was because, like, you would have been yeah, trying to lay some fucking favorite kamikaze 30 yeah, seconds before the jump. No, nah, so it was I laid it. Like, the same time. Glitch. I'm like, I laid it, but then it put two of the same bet twice, and then it won, obviously, yeah. and then fucking after but the race, first But the first lay bet disappeared, right? So you laid it again, yeah? And I then it happened. No, I, I just did it like, once, and then I got back, and it, it did two. So there I don't was know. a phase uh, where Betfair, I remember when it got like real glitchy when we so, were hammering yeah. bonuses back in the day. Yeah, it's stressful time. Moral of the story is don't use it unless you know what you're doing, and if you are using it, ask us um, or do tiny stakes no. to learn it first. Anyway, I sort of want to yeah. move on a little bit because one yeah. point we were talking about, and I think this is where it all comes down to it. You say, if people have a last leg, you know, reach out to us because we will help you. We will teach you what to do. But unfortunately, so many people just can't be fucked and it really yeah. just comes down to that. And this is a bigger, broader issue with gambling in general. We get so many, a lot of the people that do come in now, obviously we've had a lot of different, you know, we've had a, a much improved sort of community audience that have come through our doors recently they're a lot more willing to learn but generally the people that don't want to or that jump off after a week or two they're just like nah mate i'm just i just can't be asked like i can't be yeah, bothered yeah. And it's like think about this like if, if let, let's use that 96 grand example or bet as an example you can't be bothered putting in maybe an hour two hours of sourcing the funds organizing how you're going to do it, record it in a spreadsheet, make it foolproof, don't fuck up to lock in 40 grand, yeah. yet you're going to work for 48 days, or 48 weeks in a year, five days a week, 40 hours a week. If, yeah, and for the same amount of money. For the yeah. same amount of money and it, you're happy to do fast. that. Like This is something that I really, really can't understand people. I understand people are working full time. They don't necessarily want to commit a Saturday to you know sitting at the computer. And I do get that, but you've got to also put it in perspective and be like, what's the alternative? Well, like, why not? Like why, if, if particularly in these like yeah. what rare examples, just learn. Well, I just reckon that guy learn. probably wouldn't know how to do it. Maybe yeah. he, d he does, but if, if, if he did, would he do it? As you said, it probably couldn't be fucked anyway. Yeah, Who's but I reckon Steve's like just speaking more generally in a sense like, oh, yeah. Mm. yeah match betting cool we know it works cool yeah, i know yeah. you're gonna make money but man i don't want to sit at my computer for five hours to make five hundred dollars and it's like well you're gonna sit at your desk for for nine hours or eight hours mm. on monday and you're not gonna make five hundred dollars yeah, so on your couch punting and, and you'll go yeah, minus of course, that's the alternative but, too. but it's more so like oh it's a lot of work to make that money and it's like yeah but the alternative is you work you know mm. you might have to work 20 hours in your office or so two days you're sitting at your desk to make that sort of money as well. So it's like, well, it's not really a lot of work compared to that. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you look at it like that. It is. It, it can be a lot of work, but then it also can be very easy if you set it up properly. Like there's subs well, who... Not gonna, it's not going to be easy overnight. Go shopping with their missus and make two grand on their phone. Like it, it's not going to happen. Like we're not going to click buttons and you're going to make money. Yeah. If you set the thing up properly, it's, it's like tying your shoelaces yeah. but, it's only but it won't works. happen overnight as of tom said it won't correct. happen overnight and this is what people can't get over and i think it is a, it's not an issue with just gambling people generally can't be fucked because we're lazy yeah. can't be fucked and it's the lack of security as well because obviously we do have losing saturday like people aren't going to be like well i'm not going to give up my thursday friday at work and potentially rely on that income on a saturday sort of thing yeah, but, but it's like if you look at it like a week yeah. Fucking easy. yeah if you but look if at it a week months, once again it's all long lose. term no yeah. no but also yeah. if it was really easy and everybody was like if match betting for example or just betting with a system was really easy and everyone could do it no one would be losing on the punt mm. and everyone loses on the punt because it does require patience does require discipline and it's not something that you're going to learn in a week yeah. and the people that stick around they reap the rewards and that's why it's such a small minority of all gamblers or all the market is because most people it's the same with everything not everybody's going to be an entrepreneur like everybody's going to most people are going to work for someone else because it's easier you just you know don't have to do anything outside of your comfort zone and then people that want to do yeah. match betting or want to change the way that they do things they go and do it not everyone's going to be a fucking bodybuilder or a muscle yeah, man yeah. because that takes time it takes patience discipline it's the same with everything and those that want to do it, they reap the rewards. And, yeah. it, you know, for example, you look at our subscribers, we've made, what, 93 units profit since September 1? It's not bad, is they're it? Fucking, they're reaping the rewards. But they didn't they didn't join September 1 and go, no. you beauty, and start making, you know, no. whatever that is, 10 units profit a week. I That's mean, this is this is the thing. This is what we get a lot of criticism for. And there's particularly, there was a video during the week JP responded to, and this guy was like, oh, how much are you guys making off the subscriptions and shit like that? It's like... Yeah, of course we're making money, but we're putting in a lot of hours, we're putting in a lot of work, right, right, that's irrelevant. But the thing is, is when when you first started match betting, when you first started match betting, when I first started match betting, it probably took 
particularly system related, it took probably three, four months to actually understand what was going on, get the ins and outs of it all, actually have confidence to start making money off it. People come in and they're starting to do that in two weeks now. Yeah. And they're getting elite coaching. Well, they're the getting thing. the elite advice. They get, they're not yeah. going to make mistakes that we made. Like, so, well, you but how much, you is, how much is your boss making or the company that you work yeah. for? Do you care you about that? Him? Exactly. Yeah, when, yeah. Like I said, when you, when you go get a beer at a pub, you stop and ask the waiter or the, the guy pouring your beer how much he's making or how much the company's making. You, no, you, that's, fuck, that's you just get your beer. You pay for a service. Mm. You pay for so, something that you want that yeah, adds value. This, this complex around how much we're making, like... Like, please go and make a company and understand what actually goes on. Like, imagine imagine oh, trying someone... to coach 500 subscribers. Yeah, that's mm. what I mean. Do you reckon like... one person can do that? Do you reckon two, three? No. This is why we've got six employees and mm. we're trialing yeah, people. Yeah, so throughout. those. this is the other like, thing. Like, yes, Drake... the system, like, as a company is now starting to make money. That's great. But we also operated for free for ages. It also took us seven years of match betting to get here. Yeah. Like, this didn't happen mm. overnight. We right. also operated for, like a year and made next to no money and now that like sure there's some money coming in but we've got six people that we've we're investing our money and time in now to mm. help them yeah. they're employed they're, they're making money working for free they're helping up like yeah they're you helping other GST, people yeah. tax fucking the tax man good Fuck luck tax fucking man. running a company i promise you if you want to run yeah. a company um, like yeah so we're not sitting like we're not sitting here scratching our balls being like haha this is a fill up like and the money is irrelevant like at the end of the day we're trying to hire people and build this team and build this company so we can help more people at the end like we post that, these videos stories of people that are like you know i saw you guys i hated your tiktoks i thought you guys were absolute wankers <laughs> but then it clicked in me that the reason i was getting so upset is because all this shit is the shit that i was doing and then they start betting and they're like what the fuck this has completely changed the way that i've thought about it thank you so much and they're not sitting there going oh, fuck me, they've got 500 subs. Some of them are paying like seven bucks a week. Others are paying $20 a week. Oh, they must be making, you know, eight grand a month or whatever. Like they don't care because they fucking change the way yeah. that they think about betting. And yeah. now they're not going to lose money on the punt and they're making money. So the $80 they paid or whatever. But it's a zero sum game. Uh, it's not a zero sum game. So when you pay us, we, we don't lose you money. We're making you money. We're getting a, a slice of that as well. And the bookies are the ones losing. So when I pay my PT, cares? when I pay yeah. my you know, like, and he gives me a program and weights to lift and food to eat, yeah. I don't go. No, no, hold on. Well, how much are you making? Yeah. I don't give a fuck because Correct. I'm getting something out of the service. And that's nobody sits there asking their barista, like you said, or the bloke pouring. The, hold on, can you go get the owner of the 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 uh, the pub here, and can I work out how much he's making before I pay for this beer? Well, <laughs> like, what the fuck the, is that? What about the guy in the DMs? Before I'm gonna shout out to Ben. Ben was basically rinsing oh. me and telling me that he pretty much hates me, which is fine. I, I, I promise <laughs> the you there would be people out there that hate all of us, but we, you can hate us and great, that's fine. But what we teach is not something that we've made up, right? This is just pure maths. It's, it's the way that it works. And if you don't believe it works, then great. But if you want to believe it works, go check it out and don't care who's delivering the content. Just learn it and I promise you it'll work. Who the fuck, if I had a fucking piece of shit on my head or if I got <laughs> undies on my head or if I look like a piece of crap, who cares? It's still going to work. And who's delivering it? You can keep hating us, but it'll still work. It's, it's not uh, something that's related to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Like, there's, who cares if you hate me? Like, There's a really good message here. <laughs> I'm reading through some of the responses from the story. You know, people are going to ask questions yeah. or want us to talk about certain things. And there's one thing here from Louis and it says, knowing others are benefiting from your service, does that make your life and work easier? Maybe I'll ask you guys, what do you think? Oh, mate, like, what did you say the other night? You almost cried when you heard that guy's voice recording. Oh, well, oh, it, was just, weekend. it was just fucking emotional. Like the guy sends through a voice recording saying like I was a fucking, you know, problem gambler. Like I was re really struggling with it all. And now like I look at it so differently and that's so nice to be making profit. And that's like, that's pretty sick to like get a message from that. And I someone... didn't expect that when we started this up. I did never nah. in my wildest dreams thought that those sort of things would come. But out now that we've been like live now for almost two years as a company, oh now it's different. Mate, yeah. they, these people are not just one well, every week. We get, They're yeah, five, ten the, a week. There was, the we, we did just a podcast, interviewed yeah. Matt Hill, who's been around for one year, and I had no idea. He obviously joined Platinum first, then came across to the system. He's made fifty k, and three weeks before he joined, we'll link the podcast here. We haven't posted it yet. He lost 18,000 in three weeks. He won a multi first, 50, and then turned it into 12K, then lost 18. The 6K difference was a personal loan that he had to get to fucking gamble. And then next minute, he's joined the system and Platinum and never gambled again and now made 50K. He bought a house with his missus. Half the deposit was from purely from this. Mate, like, that's fucking elite that we've yeah. done that. Like, of course, we... that that. If we were just getting paid and we kind of had this world where no one was talking to us... 
no chance I would work as much. No, as, of course, or but have it's not. That's passion. the thing. Like that's why you know how much are they making of subs? Like, bro, get in our DMs. Like, I'll nah. send you four minutes of personal voice recordings before you even join or ask yeah. a question. You're gonna ask questions. You get responses. You join. Steve speaks to you, or Max speaks to you, or Kath speaks to you. You know, like there, <laughs> there are so many people behind this operation that are like making sure that you not only understand everything that goes on here, but so that you can change the way that you think about punting. And it's not just blokes sitting here, like we're not just sitting here fucking cashing checks, counting our, counting our pennies. We're fucking yeah. working our ass off so that you or any of the you subscribers won't do that though. If can you, change if you, the way they think about their punting. Yeah. If you run a company just collecting money or, or motive yeah. is money, it catches up with you. Yeah. you're not going to be the same because you don't give a fuck about anything you'll burn out. your own bank account. You'll burn out if you focus it's on just, that. Yeah. You've, only got, you've, you've only got a, like, a finite candle you can burn if all you're focusing 100%. on is that paycheck. Yeah. It, no human, you need something unless, intrinsic. You need something internal to... To yeah, like motivate unless you're psychologically not well, no human can just keep doing that <laughs> without any emotion. To yeah. link into all of this, I'm just reading through a couple of other questions. Brian's asked, <laughs> "How difficult was it to start the system?" And maybe like you don't have to go into intricacies, but Steve, obviously, you started it from a bit of you know JP putting a rocket up your ass, bit of dumb luck, a bit of you know a bit of everything really. Yeah, to really be honest. was. It just sort of fell Lucky together. that you had the stats background and the analytics background, but. You know, we're, we're now two years running publicly, but mm. it, it started way before that. You know, how difficult was it? Like, what's gone into it? Maybe you can provide a little bit of background into why, how we're here now. Like, it didn't happen overnight. No, it didn't. I mean, it, you summed it up pretty well. It all sort of just fell together, to be honest. And it started, you know, it started from the horse promo method for sure. You know, years ago, we started with the horse promo method and then being sort of a... Yeah, data nerd, I suppose. I just started playing around with numbers, started playing around with figures, started working out if I did this, what would happen? If this happened, what would happen sort of thing. And then all of a sudden, I just had this realization. I was like, hang on, there's a there's a potential here to make a lot more. And I just remember telling you and then JP, you passed it on to Tom. And then you were the one that was like, we should teach people this sort of this sort of idea. And yeah. I just thought that's a load yeah, of shit. Yeah, it started when we were just like, we'd get on Zoom or whatever. Zoom COVID. And there'd be yeah. like, there'd be like right. eight of us and, and they'd be like, what are we backing? What are we backing? Literally. And we'd be like, all right, we're that's doing right. this, we're doing this, like get it on now. And then we'd all yeah. be sitting there on Zoom like, you fucking built it. They were just your mates. It was like, yeah. your accountant, your family friend or something. That's just the be coffee there. chief. The coffee chief was yeah. there. Nah, that was fun. Was, that, that'd be probably one of my most memorable fun times. Well, that's how it's, yeah. I, I reckon even when we started running the Telegram, like real initial, I reckon we were still on those Zooms, not with the Telegram members, but we are posting them in the Telegram, but we are all still like on a Zoom. Like yeah. we were so excited by, holy mm. fuck, I think this fully works. I remember, like, it just used to be the best, wasn't it? It was Saturday morning, you'd wake up and you'd yeah. just be oh, like full licking That's your what lips. I was saying, like, like I was tipping last Saturday and I was like, yeah. after Thursday's fill up as well, I'm like, I'm actually yeah, chomping yeah, at the yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Woke up, I walked to get a coffee. I'm like, the well, sun's out. I'm like, you're fucking beauty. I used to do it from my parents' house because I used to not live there, but I used to go there every Saturday, sit in the same room. And my dad was sick at the time. He's obviously not here anymore. And I used to get to him every morning on the Saturday. <laughs> and he used to, I used to ask him, you getting on today? And like, obviously he'd never bet in his life. And he just laughed at me. And one Shake day he said, he's getting on. I think we lost that day, so it was a bit funny. But, yeah. but that's, I used to get so excited. The, the best thing is though the excitement that we had when we were doing it for our, for ourselves back in the day, and even I still get excited like when it's my tipping day and shit. But like that's what our subs would be feeling. <laughs> yeah, they do, and mate, you see and you it. You can tell them like Friday yeah, we, night. We, we, we there's a fill Friday up. night at the valley. Like surely we can get a few races. <laughs> is is in, Phil like, coming? <laughs> I want to KFC Phil. Phil. Yeah, it's the few, best. There's a few um, little slogans that are getting a bit cultish. But yeah, how nice is that? Is like how nice is knowing. Someone else wrote something as well saying like, actually, I'll read it. Sean, he, Sean writes a lot of stuff to us and he's jumped into the DMs after we asked for a few requests about topics and whatnot. But he said, and I think this will resonate with a lot of people that are subscribers or potentially thinking about being subscribers. What the system allows me to do is enjoy my love of having a punt and cheering home winners with the excitement of not knowing how my day may turn out. Could be a big day, could be an average day, could be a losing day, but always knowing in the long term that I'm going to be making profit, which is perfect for someone who enjoys the excitement of the punt. Hope that makes sense. And I think that that's something that we probably don't touch on enough, right? At the end of the day, you know, we, we rah, 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 like don't gamble, don't do multis, blah, blah, blah. And we, you know, we mean that. We don't want you guys to be donating money on the punt, but it can still be fun. And I feel like, Absolutely. you know, following the system of what I tell people with the follow-ups is like, yeah, there's a bit of hard work, but you know, blah, blah, blah. but if you get through the first three or four weeks and you set your accounts up properly, you can be punting, which is essentially what it is with our edge, but you're betting on horses 
every single Saturday if you enjoy doing that. But you know that if the longer you're here, the more profit you'll make. And that's a pretty fucking sick position to be in. So we sort of, I sort of touched on this in the last podcast. And we had a, I had a very similar message from a guy during the week. He's been really... Um, He's been really vocal. He's, he's loving it. He's Scotty. I've been, if you're listening, Scotty, yeah. love your work, mate. I've been, we've been having really good chats with you. And he was sort of mentioning, he's like, now that I've actually seen the other side of it, and this is something I did mention last podcast, is that people have never actually won on the punt. So they don't actually realize that it can be done. And so therefore they just accept that they're going to lose because you know they're losing and that's part of gambling. Scotty was like, now that I've actually seen the other side of it, and I can completely relate, you're like, fuck, why would I ever go back? And he, he said he come, came from a pretty sort of gambling background, came from a point where he was, you know, just donating money, um, you know, sometimes couldn't control it, typical gambling habit sort of thing. But now he's seen the other side of it. He just can't fathom the idea and doesn't even make sense. It's like the Johnny Jogan guy, I've talked about him There's as well. There's heaps of them. Though, There's like heaps that. of them. But, but it's it is, not it even is literally like that. When, when you see how dumb it is, and but you don't realize how dumb it is until you've seen yeah, the other side. You need a bit like, you know, the grass is always greener. You need to see that greener grass before you realize But it's not even, but I don't reckon it's even subs. Like it's how we are here where we are now. Like absolutely. Would I like to have a $50 bet on something every now and then? Of course. Like I had a $50 mm. bet on the Melbourne Cup, whatever. But we know how dumb it is. And it's, we're mm. not saying don't ever gamble again. Like we're, rah, 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 we're no. your boss. We're bossing you around telling no, you what no. to do. But it's like, once you understand how stupid it is mm. and how detrimental it is, then at least you can do it within reason, knowing all the facts and knowing what's actually available to you, as opposed to continuing down the path where you can't win on the punt. You blokes are scammers. Nobody makes money. You know, this is all part of it. I'm losing what I want to lose. This is fun. Cool. Whatever. If it is, but once you have an understanding of what is actually possible with your accounts, how you can set things up with a bit of structure, a bit of discipline, then it is like, well, we're not going to go back to fucking betting on every race around the country. Yeah, we're not going to sit in the pub and have 50 beers and just continue to punt because we just know it's fucking burning money and it's there's so many other work. things that you can do. So yeah, it's, I reckon that's that's an elite that's an elite mindset, an elite thing that the system and mm. even match betting offers, like even if you, even if you're not following the system, but you understand how to make money match betting, you have that, you know, you go to a footy game or you're in an NBA game, whatever the fuck you're doing, and you have a bet on the game that you're there for a bit more entertainment. That's fine. As long as you know why betting like that yeah. in, the, in the future is going to be on. detrimental if, to you. If you bet over the last two months during the spring racing carnival and you bet for fun, then don't worry. It's all well, good. But fine. providing, you know, don't lie to yourself. Providing it's fun, you're just having a bit of a laugh, all good. But if you bet through, during the spring carnival and you didn't make money, you uh, and you like you were actually betting to make money and you didn't make money you've yeah, honestly if you're, missed if you're, out si on you're sitting at work on like yeah. you're sitting at work on thursday oaks day and you're punting on every race at flemington yeah it's pretty like i don't really see how you can say that that's fun no exactly but i'm saying there there was so many i just got an email we just had a, like a, a five minute break in between our first half of this podcast i got an email from one of the bookies not going to say who saying deposit a hundred dollars give you a hundred dollars in bonus bets there was that many offers in spring to oh. cash in on it was a dead Friday set night, Saturday Saturday Friday morning, night, Saturday. Phones blowing up. Ping, ping, ping. Literally, like, messages, emails, they're coming out of the woodworks to try and get you. If you didn't make money over the last two months and you tried to make money, then you've seriously missed out on a massive opportunity. And the, the upside to that is at least you've got an opportunity to learn and when next spring rolls around. Mm. But that's that's also the other thing. Like you don't have to be, it's not just spring. Mm. A, lot no, of those of people, a lot of those people that did lose during spring, they're not going to stop punting now because it's not spring carnival. No, yeah, of course. They'll punt this weekend, next weekend, yeah. on their lunch break. Like, you know, there's they run, as we say, like to people that are turning bonuses over and shit. The horses run every single day, apart from Christmas day, in mm. basically every single state. Well, we haven't, we haven't missed a single Saturday, I don't think, ever since December 16th, 2020 or whatever. No, we had I don't two weeks off and that's it. We had two weeks off. We were but I reckon we only off. missed one Saturday last year because I reckon the Boxing yeah, we Day did. that we, we tipped on New Year's and Day, Day were both on a Saturday, 15th, I reckon. Correct. Yeah. So we, did, we missed the 7th or the 8th. And then we start back up for Magic it. Millions. Correct. Yeah. Um, okay, I've got like a little bit of a segue, but I'm just like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm literally just reading through all the comments, which is elite. I, you know well, that I don't before like we do that, talk, like right? obviously um, talking about changing people's mindsets, I think yeah, th there has been a breakthrough um, and we're not going to go down the pathway of, of rinsing anyone um, on our podcast anymore. But Simon Blackburn obviously signed up to our system Simply. and within 11 days, he was able to completely change his mindset around betting essentially. And, and it's even um, gone into his own posting and what he's posting about going from posting about multis for the last two years or however long he's been doing it to now subscribing to us you probably sent him i reckon 
45 minutes worth of voice on the Friday night that he signed up. I yeah, think it was... Bit. Well, I wanted him to... Like, if he was going to join, I yep. wanted to know that he's going to do it properly. Otherwise, like, what's the point? Like, And then I would have sent him maybe another hour as well. Um, and all these are saved and stuff like that. If, if uh, Maybe we'll release them one day. Who knows? We, we, we don't want to expose or rinse anyone, but more so just showing how within seven days, this guy has literally said you boys have fully changed my mindset around betting and I'm never going to do a multi again. Like this is, and then people are sending him requests to do multis and he's telling yeah, his Yeah, he's relaying subs, it on going, no, I'm not, not going to make multis money anymore. The people can't believe it. So if someone with that much kind of power and that much pride in, in the way he bets is now saying, all right, I'm doing it this way, even though he may be going off and trying to do stuff that he fully doesn't understand just yet, mm. which is fine. Um, if we can do that to, to someone like that, then this is why so many people are going from that full on spectrum of, okay, I had a personal loan to now just looking at it, like you said, and how dumb it is. Like it doesn't take a year to change your mindset. It may take you fucking one video or yeah, one, it's, it one idea. It takes you a year to get to the point where you're making a lot of money yeah, from doing it, but, but not to change and but to the, stop losing. Yeah, but the more powerful thing is the mindset. It's not, mm. okay, I'm going to make 10 grand. That doesn't change anything. Like I could... Make no, the, you ten grand now, but it doesn't mean anything if you're going to go blow it tomorrow. The, the first, the first Saturday Simo was on, we went negative five. Correct. Minutes. We had a losing day, and he still that was. His we first thought for years. sure as yeah. well. We thought like, he'd start oh, posting. He's gonna go, he's and, gonna, no, just like he'll disappear now. Like, mm, but, nah. conv- but he didn't. Like, honestly, but that's the credit, change of mindset. That's credit the, to him, and I like I want to give some credit to us as well. Like, we yeah, put in a lot true. of fucking hard work, not just with Simo, but anybody that. We get. I remember JP sent a message to somebody like the other week, going, "He's like, nah, this isn't for me." Um, I don't have the discipline. I can't do this. And then JP sent him a few voice messages and he's like, oh, when's the, when's the next tipping day? Or And then he started doing it properly. And it's like, there are so many people that are like, once they watch the initial video, maybe they never respond to us, but you can tell that they watch it or they go through it and they're like, no, I can't do this. Like, it can be overwhelming. And that's something you, you literally have to overcome. And if you if you think of it like, oh, I got to learn all this in a week, then of course you're done. Yeah. But if you, if you say, all right, I'm going to give this three months, and I'm going to learn this over three months. And then that is going to affect how I bet elsewhere, how I make decisions elsewhere. Then all of a sudden, you, you wake up like that Scotty guy. He's been the mm. lead. I've spoken to him too about mm. all the like, different things we've spoken about. Yeah. And literally, the mindset is so powerful outside of betting as well. And people don't realize that. Well, everyone's like, Definitely. you know, it's oh, like, cool, it costs 100 bucks for the month, but I'm probably not going to make that subscription back. And it's like, mate, some people won't in their first month. But... If you fully changed how you think about your punting and you're losing fifty, a hundred dollars a week on the punt that you no longer do, you paid a hundred dollars to stop yourself from losing whatever, whatever six grand every fucking year. Like, imagine if someone said that to you, you, you you're losing a hundred, hundred fifty bucks a week, and it's like, all right, pay a hundred dollars for this month, go through our content, learn it all, and you won't lose a hundred dollars a week going forward. That's fifty two hundred dollars I mean, for one year, and you paid a hundred dollars for that. And that sort of you know that what you learn out of that obviously you don't lose that six grand and that's elite but you've learned so much that is important in any financial yeah. investment you're ever going to do if you're ever looking at buying houses get into crypto get into finance whatever it is there are so many transferable skills that yeah. i'm not going to say we teach but definitely a part of no sort we of the do process. Though, because they're, they're principles that they're very yeah. we're not we're not making them up these are just fundamentals that any human should know and unfortunately yeah. The average human, without sounding like the average human is dumb or we're better, people don't understand these fundamentals. No, and but that's like why most lose. I was speaking Simple. to a financial advisor a couple of months ago and just talking about the psychology behind it all and understanding for him, you know, the big decisions is when to cash out, when to when to not, whatever. And it's so many similar principles, exactly the exact the same, same as what we, you know, sort of preach here. And it's like, that is going to be seriously valuable moving forward. These shit, I didn't really know. All the shit that I teach has come from a guy on internet who trades Forex and teaches mm. people Forex. Yeah, and yeah. I haven't studied his Forex technical patterns. I've studied his psychology playlist. Yeah. And that's now been able to be transferred to thousands of other people around Australia. That's mm. not betting. That is psychology of yeah. literally how you think about a decision. It, it's not hard. It's but if you're worried about like, oh, I, don't, I can't do this. I don't think I'm built for this. Like, honestly, go and fucking look at Simo's page. Don't mm. want you to fucking no, buy 100%. his shit. But he literally was somebody that would post bet slip after bet slip, oh, delete losing bet slip, now, yeah. video, <laughs> videos of him riding multis, like got this multi on for the 2023 AFL Premiership winner. Yeah, I know we silly. spoke about that. Like multi, multi, multi. He's gone through all of our content. He has got so much personal coaching. And 10 days later, he goes, fucking hell, these blokes actually might be onto something. He wants to buy us a beer. This isn't fucking fucking full-on rocket science. And if I just consume this content 
and stop blindly gambling, guess what? I'm not mm. going to lose. And he's, you know, he's been publicly, he's publicly said, you know, I'm a fucking big losing punter on horses. And now yeah. he's not going to lose. And now he's fucking made a post going, my first ever day of doing structure, my first ever day of tracking bets. And my first ever day of making profit. And it's like, fucking... Yeah. Well, like, cool. If it's worked for you, mate. Like, it's, it's a full it's switch. It's like, so many a shadowing moment for him. And I know sort of the way he's gone about it is very questionable and he's oh, doing yeah, other yeah. things that are very questionable. But at the end of the day, we've been pretty vocal over... You know, since we started doing podcasts, we're here to change the industry. We're here to raise awareness. We're here to change the way people think about betting. That is something that we're very passionate about because it is disgusting. And I can, we'll talk about some other things that are going on. But at the moment, you know, Simo's got a big outreach and he's got a big outreach, particularly to a community of people who are 18 to 25, who love that sort of alpha ego male sort of rah, rah, rah. And unfortunately, they're the most vulnerable people because 18 year olds, sorry, you, you, you're dumb. We've all been there, like particularly with money, generally speaking, obviously not everyone, but you're very vulnerable. You think you're fucking the bee's knees. You got all this testosterone pumping into you. And unfortunately, Simo does appeal to those people, but now at least he's appealing to them and teaching them no, a lot. Teaching. Not well, teaching, teaching. But, but at least he's spreading a better message than what he was doing. So in terms of the industry, in terms of 18 year olds who are potentially watching, I see it. It's, it's not a bad thing. Well, I just think it's a it's a huge um, awakening. Yeah, for yeah. him, but yeah. only it's such a massive positive thing for reinforcement that we know what we're doing is fucking powerful and yeah. it works. Like if we have changed one, or you, if you speak to any eighteen to twenty five year old dude that is a punter and his algorithms on TikTok showing punting shit, they will all know who Simo is. Mm. And they would all go, yeah, he's a fucking massive degen. He loses heaps. Like it's funny uh, to watch. It's funny to watch, but he's just like punting the house down and yeah i'll sign up to a service for four bucks for a week because it's a fucking laugh and i just want to be in the group for a bit but now they see him go nah guys no more multis that's stupid we're giving away money every time we get a bonus bet back we're going to two-way or three-way dutch it whether or not he's you know knows how to do that properly yet i'm not sure but <laughs> even just spreading that message it's like oh you're no fun anymore simo like this is fucking boring it's like nah dude he fucking woke up like mm. maybe it took him 30 years of punting but he now understands that what he's been doing is just going to continue to donate money. And I'd be very surprised if he goes back the other way now. Oh, I hope he. I really hope no, he doesn't. I don't think. I think he's literally had that light bulb where he's just like, "What mm. the fuck's that?" Like he might have the the odd relapse, but he knows that's dumb. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, he and, knows and that. like we just discussed, it's not about us yeah. going rah 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 anti gambling. Don't gamble. No. Like gambling's for losers. Nah, you can. It can be done in a controlled environment, but once you see the other side, mm, yeah. you personally understand how stupid it is, and you're not going to do it anywhere near as much as you would be now. So, yeah, yeah. So shout out to Simo. He said he'd buy us a beer if I ever see him. I'll, <laughs> I'll cash that in for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, like that's a good example of if you go through our content and actually have a crack and fair play to him, he actually did go through the content and asked a fuck ton of questions. Yeah. And if you do that, you'll get the support. And fuck, if we can change the way that he thinks about punting. I have no doubt that anybody that finds their way into our DMs with a bit of patience, we can change the way that they think about punting. On influencers, there's another good one in here. We probably should have touched on it um, through the dabble space, though it's a different bookie. And I know Steve loves these guys, so I would love to see Steve's reaction to this. Thoughts on influential individuals such oh. as Shaq oh. or the uninspired, unemployed <laughs> partnering up with bookies? Oh. Do you want to know it's oh. an unofficial stat or do we not want to put that out there? Oh, I've heard it's the, the, the money that they got paid to do that. Over, over, over one point four million dollars. Yeah. Over a million. Not Shaq. The, the yeah, yeah, the Imagine what Shaq would have got. Let's not. Let's for the record, don't we that. don't know that. Yeah, we don't. But know. there are rumors circulating <sighs> that they, they've been paid well over a million dollars for that collaboration with PointsBet. And how does that? Like if they were sitting in this room, like what would you say to them? You love their fucking videos. I, remember I you love them. I, you sent I really me one, at, you sent me one ages ago. It's sad yeah. because their they, content's elite. But their podcast's they know, elite. Yeah, do you reckon they know how shit that is now? For, for like, do you reckon? I promise you, I don't because I like I don't having watched either. some of their content. I don't think they have any idea about raising or punting. Like, I don't think they do. And and, and to be fair, like it's fucking hard to knock back. A milli, like if someone comes to you, and goes. That's mate, where I'm sitting. Is it like I don't want to? I don't want to judge their character. No, I'm or anything, not judging but them. Like, no, like, no, but do, it shows they... you how much the bookies value these influencers. Yeah, yeah, like, that's a good point. They, 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 point. they know the power of these guys have X followers and they have this much viewing. It's just like literally paying. It'd be like buying a share for ten bucks, and that share is going to pay you a hundred bucks every year. Think forever. about this as well. Like, so there's what there's one ad they do where they're. It looks like they're in a Melbourne pub. They're wearing Melbourne and Sydney Swans colours, I'm fairly sure, or something like that. 
the Inspired Unemployed are from Sydney. They follow, follow their yeah, RL. Yeah. Listen to their podcast. They don't know AFL. No, they flew up for like Granny, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so they don't know AFL. So think about it. So this, they've literally just been told by PointsBet where these colors yeah, say these things. Like, think about that. Like, think about that. That is clearly showing that SportsBet or PointsBet, whoever is sponsoring them, are just getting them to say whatever the fuck they need to say, dressing them up in whatever colors they need to wear just to appeal to an audience, just to suck yeah. the audience in. And yeah. It's disappointing. I... I don't think like unfortunately this one point f- this large figure, Millie. so many people wouldn't knock it back no, even if they, they knew the idea. But th- these are the people they target. Like those yeah. probably a, a bad example because they would be pretty well. I think they're going well financially. Their podcast. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. They're cashing in now. Their pod, they've got you know, yeah. They've beer, got they've got they're a good and, brand. Yeah. Like fucking awesome. They've yeah. started yeah. from nothing. Yeah. Elite. It's great. Fucking, fucking awesome. love to see it. Right. But then the more uh, relevant thing that you, you just said and people not saying no to it is the people who might be 19 who just started a podcast that double goes up to him and says hey we'll pay you two grand to do this and of course they go, yeah fucking oath I'm yeah. gonna fucking start handing out double caps outside the MCG and give away corporate box tickets they're underselling themselves correct and yeah. and because they want the money and they're so desperate these are the people they're targeting so yeah. it's so easy to get these people and all you need to do is get 10, 20 of these affiliates yeah for double it's what um, how much is that? 10, 10 by 20, uh, 10 by 2, what, that 20K a month? Yeah. And they're going to probably make 100K out of it. So it's yeah. just adding, adding, adding. And that's how you grow. And it's so smart. So, but yeah. like with the uninspired, unemployed, like it's so easy to be like, yeah, bro, like they're getting fucking a milli. Like, how are you going to turn down a milli? And it's like, I, sw- I, I reckon, and I don't know them from a bar of soap, but I do think they're genuinely good lads. And I reckon if somebody like sat him in a room and was like, if you're, you're going to get paid a million dollars for this, but as a result of your million dollars, you're going to have a negative influence on 20,000 people's lives and they're going to lose X amount of money over their lifetime punting and that's how you're getting your milli. I reckon they would think differently about it. And I have no idea what the pitch is or, you know, it's all fun and games, whatever. It's a million bucks. But like the negative impact that that has without them, and most people won't care because that's the culture of Australia. Like, who cares? It's just a fucking, yeah. it's another bookie. But I would lo- I would honestly, we'll never be able to speak to them. They'll never talk to us. But I would love to know <laughs> if they understand, you know, kind of like, it's like, it's almost like, oh, I spoke to the missus about this. I'm like, if we were getting if we were getting fifty k a month from a from a bookie and we knew that it was money coming from losing punters and she's like well, it's kind of like blood money isn't it like <laughs> no it is because we could do this I promise you we could all do this we could become the biggest affiliates well, top five top ten I have no doubt in Australia and we'd be making ten times what we make now I wouldn't be able to sleep at night but <laughs> but no but this is the thing people don't get it's like yeah. well people be like well, why wouldn't you do like, that for them that don't understand it like. Uh, yeah it is because they don't we, we we're lucky because we see okay we see people telling us that we've changed their lives we see people take see how much money they make but then we also see the other side and we see the person who messages us on instagram that we don't even know who never subs who says i've lost 10k this month so we see and we understand both worlds when you're only over here or when you're only over there or when you're in the middle and you have no fucking idea either yeah. way then of course you're going to say yes to a million dollars and you probably don't fully understand like people in the, watching this will probably be like oh but they just didn't add they yeah, didn't yeah. do anything but, but 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 what like what do you do you know what you're promoting? Correct. Like you're just promoting gambling. You're so promoting like, a what's, bookmaker. Is there is there one positive impact that gambling has on society or an individual? The answer yeah, to yeah, that is fine. Basically no. no. So you know that the milli you're getting or whatever fucking money you're getting, if it's two grand from Dabble or fifty bucks to sign up, you know that that money is having a negative influence on where that yeah like, on whoever it's you're influencing as part of it, and but, I just. This is the thing. I've spoken to people and they don't think it's a negative influence if they're exactly, just yeah. posting a sponsorship yeah. on their podcast or if they're just saying, oh, um, we, we mentioned their name in our podcast and they paid us this. They're paying yeah, for well, our podcast. Yeah, well, it's like we're, it's not, we're not telling people to bet, which I'm sure like they could be like, we're not there, telling people to bet. There's different levels of it, like, yeah. of course not, but they're giving you a million dollars because they know that if you speak about points bet or you're on their ad, more people are going to like it, more people are going to relate to it. It's going to be, you know... They can associate with it. The next time they see points bet, oh, I remember listening to the boys' podcast. They're, they're fucking funny cunts. I'm going to fucking get a points bet account. Like, it doesn't probably directly happen like that, but that's why they're paying you a million bucks. They're not doing it because they don't no. think they get any customers or any influence out no. of you. So, yeah, that was one when I saw that. I was like, fucking hell. Like, yeah. I can't. Like, they're getting to fucking everyone. Never uh, who's, who's not, who's not going to be on a not. betting ad soon? Yeah. It's mental. One thing um, that you sort of mentioned there, I, I don't think, yeah, the general population really understand. They think, oh, whatever, they're just cashing in. It's fine. Correct, I'd probably it? do the same thing. And I had a conversation with a guy recently and he was saying sort of how the AFL just 
you know, whatever that they've got all these big sponsorships with sports bet, you know, it's great for the brand. It's improving the interest in AFL. It's improving, you know, the revenue for the AFL and everything. And yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, if you look at it from purely that angle, it definitely is helping, you know, grow the game of AFL. But at the end of the day, there's so many negative elements that people are just completely unaware about because they don't see it and because they, they don't fall into that category of a person who knows someone who's a degenerate gambler or has been a degenerate gambler. So they're just completely oblivious to it all. And they're like, that's all right. If, you know, people are going to fall down that pathway, they fall down that pathway. That's their own fault. But if it was drug money, would you have the same view? Of course not. Because it's the same thing. Yeah. Unfortunately. It, it, 100% but his argument, that, I remember when you spoke to me about that but his yeah. argument was like he's like punting is good for the AFL because people that don't care about a certain game if it. they put a bet on it they'll watch but the game but that is correct but but is it well no well, the people that have watched well, sure, you might the get, AFL to you fucking might get, boost yeah, their of course, ratings money, whatever. Is it good? I don't you know. might get the average person that's watching a game now but like for example I don't fucking like NRL and I wouldn't, wouldn't even bet on the NRL because I don't know anything about it. But surely there's not a massive enough figure of people that are like, oh, I'm going to put a bet on this random AFL game and now I'm going to start watching it. Like, it's it, you grow up like liking AFL and getting a passion for it. And now it's getting to a point where you grow up and all you associate sport with is betting. That's all you associate sick. sport well, with. Well, one of our subs sent in the Snapchat filter on yeah. the phone. The kid was fucking playing around yeah, with, yeah, with the, the sports bet background. With the tab, or tab I think a tab one. The sports bet's got it as well. And it's we shocking. were trying to find it again and, and it wasn't on there after the Friday, Saturday. And we realized probably just because it, it's a paid one that only lasts for the weekend, which is genius. You're not going to put your tab fucking filter on Tuesday, are you? Yeah. Like you're going to put it on the weekend. So this kind of stuff, like I think the legal age for um, Snapchat was at 13. Or yeah, something. Yeah, so yeah, like, and they're exposed to. Well, there's the other thing is we like, don't know. We don't know if they exposed it to 13 year olds accounts. I generally, uh, I'd assume knows? they would know if an account is an you 18 hope, year yeah, old. I think you have to you, put in your date of birth. Yeah, yeah. Know, so they, so I'm fairly sure there'd be like legalities there. So we don't want to make any claims or anything. But the fact you can get a tap, like, well, well you can go to the footy when you're eight and yeah. around the whole ground yeah, is bet tab. Bet but this is the th- yeah. sports bet. That's all we associate with sport now. It's horrible. There was an article released probably about a month ago. Shout out to the journalist who wrote it. I can't remember. But they were saying that kids are literally growing up and associating sport or gambling with sport. Like it's a part of it. Like it's the sport isn't just training, going to the game, having a beer afterwards. It's bad that I'm yeah, no, having like, a beer yeah, yeah. afterwards, to be honest. But it's like, that's what the game is. And then you, you chuck a cheeky tenor on the game or something. Now it's all about... Oh, because if Lynch gets two goals, then my multi's going to get the first leg. Yeah. Like they're, they're literally directly related. Kids are growing up with that. We're, we can all look back and go, that's fucking stupid. But actually think about it. If you're an eight-year-old eight year and you, every you're single definitely game, not going to know better. You're not going to know any better. You're going to think that the AFL and sports bet are literally like inter- intertwined to create each other's business for each other. It's just one business essentially. Yeah, well, that's what like you look at some of, the, some of the teams and especially in the NRL and stuff, it's mm. like oh, cool, my favorite player's got a huge points bet logo on his yeah. betting jumper and I'm going to see that every day for until I turn 18 and who do I aspire to be? Oh, I love this guy. He's a legend and he, oh, he's on a points bet art or yeah. he spoke about points bet or you know, points bet help him out. So I'm going to make an account with them. And of course, like people will be like, oh, that's such a long bow, but that's why they're fucking paying to be on mm. the sidelines. That's why they're paying to be on people's jumpers because yeah. they that's they how are, that's how it works. That's how it works. It's just you just see it over and over and over again. Yeah, There's some stupid article about like gambling ads in Victoria, and it's like eight hundred a day or some shit. Like, it's yeah, fucked. across free to wear. That's a ridiculous stat. You wouldn't want to know what the number is. I can't quote it, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's full yeah. and fucked. Like you said, eight hundred. I think it actually is something like that. No, I'm pretty sure it is. Like, and you I, wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd think how the fuck's that possible? But it's across all free channels. Like, you watch the races. There'd be three hundred. Oh no, but yeah. see, I, I, I'm probably the, the only one that thinks like if well. you're watching like a racing show or something. I, like I don't care about that as much, but yeah, that's I'm fine. more like you're fucking watching the news or yeah, you're watching yeah. the block or whatever, and then just out of well, nowhere, a point bet, bet, bet R was or, Channel Nine. I think had I don't watch the news, but someone mentioned to me that Bet R was on the first part of the news or something. That's not a paid <laughs> fucking ad. I, well, oh, of course, of course they've got is. the News Corp They're, collaboration yeah, there. Exactly. So. Media, but there was a video I saw. It was a really good TikTok. Whoever did it, and they were flicking through the Herald Sun, and it yeah. was like oh, the yeah. second that back was, page, that was full so page fucked. of sports bet. Yeah, flick over. Yeah. full tab next one full point oh, I was yeah, like what the fucked. fuck I don't read the paper anymore I don't read the paper I used to read the paper every fucked. every weekend when I was a kid just go straight to the sports section flick back and then get to the, the funny part was people in the comments were saying oh well if you open up to every page in the sports section of course you're going to see it it's like yeah, mate, that's, no, that's what we're saying you're right? literally being fucking hypnotized what the fuck I never no but not, not even not, not even in the I don't ever 
ever remember seeing a nah, full nah, page never, of sponsorship never. of anything in never. the Herald Sun. Never a full page, like full back page. Like what the fuck? And they had like six pages in a row. Yeah. The, the like first six back pages. Better had two in the what? one newspaper. They're just like if that's not a like you know how bad are we as a gambling nation? Yeah, we're pretty fucking bad. These bookies have that much coin that they just have their it's fingers fuck. in every pie. Yeah. Every influencer you know sponsored by a bookie every fucking newspaper you read there's bookie things every tv show you fucking watch so, every sport team it's fucked sport, they're everywhere tiktok right tiktok you're not allowed to do paid promotions right have you seen what sports but sports we mean paid promotion you're not allowed to you know this is half the reason why like our videos get banned because we we claim to be promoting our brand or whatever yeah, so okay. that's always been a rule in tiktok you can't do promotions like that you can't i don't know the specifics i didn't know that yeah so that well that's one of been one of tiktok's things is you can't have don't quote me. Someone's going to well, hate I lost my 16,000 follower account. We've lost our 15,000 yeah. follower account. We've lost it because we're, we're promoting our brand or something. Even if you do hashtag promotion in yeah, yeah. the title, they'll, they'll can the video. Anyway, so that's been TikTok's rule. All of a sudden, they've got a proof of concept. They're a POC that they're testing out. Guess who they're testing it out with? Fucking sports bet. Sports bet have somehow completely revamped TikTok's business model. Yeah. They've got in there. I don't know. TikTok is a Chinese company or whatever. They're fucking who cares? Yeah, they like, don't know what day it is. They just they they're just bots. going. Oh, right. Sports bots, bet right. obviously have billions of dollars. Yeah. Well, if they're gonna if they're gonna like convince a sports bet have been able to manage to change a complete social media's morality or business model, whatever it is, and they're the ones that are getting tested. But do out they have an account, oh. or is yeah. it just a paid one? So no, the paid it, it's, ones it's, come up. I don't reckon they have an account. I could go on sports. No, bet. it's. Uh, well, I'm it's fairly like sure they just they just something. like do those funny videos that sports bet do. So I, the article I read about it came out on Monday or something. Yeah, I don't have have a look at it. I was, no I was sports bet um like account. It's so it all, might be promoted. Just promoted. Yeah, and you yeah. can share it, but you can't. Like I don't think there's an account. If I'm wrong, unless I'm blocked. But. I'll f- I'll find the article anyway. But the article was basically going into details about how sports bet have identified the best way for people to remember their brand is by doing funny videos. Yeah. And like they've admitted it. And you look at sports bet advertising and marketing. Well, it's they're genius fucking marketing. brilliant. They're, it's they're fucking hilarious. Elite. Yeah, they're very good. And so they know the 18 to 25 year olds who got smaller attention span than the older generation are literally getting sucked in by these 10, 15 second videos. And so they're just going. We need to get a TikTok. If anyone wants, if anyone concerning. works for sports bet currently, and you want to come work for us. We'll pay you what Sportsbet's <laughs> paying you. And I promise you, you, you can have a job exactly what you're doing for Sportsbet. So reach out to our DMs. Yeah, if that, yeah. If that works, I'll eat a few hats. <laughs> I thought we... Um, I don't know if you lads have anything else that any pressing issues... I mean, this has been... Oh, I've enjoyed this one probably the most out of any we've recorded, but apparently I have really bad taste in what's going to be good on the podcast. There's obviously one other thing that I wanted to touch on, but if you guys don't have anything else, I reckon we can wrap up with it. It's still probably going to go for a few minutes, but... You got anything else? Oh, I was going to talk about like generally sustainability around spring. And if there's something else that you had in mind? No, I was literally just going to touch on our results and what's happened well, in yeah, spring. Well, yeah, so and obviously... we roll on into the, the end of the podcast. We didn't tip today, obviously, Wednesday. And most of our subscribers would have expected us to tip. We do normally tip Saturdays and Wednesdays. Obviously, spring carnival throws us banner. You're betting on Tuesdays, Thursdays, whatever. But the reason we didn't tip today was because um, we believe that the bookies are now going to be a lot hotter with these promo bands and it actually brings a point up one of um one of the newer members in fact it was simo he couldn't believe that people get banned um and and a lot of mug punters think they don't even you can't get banned because whatever whatever and and obviously this is just full-blown fucking fantasy land if you think that's not possible but no, no, but can, for can the we just, average punter, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the average punter you're not going to get banned if you if you're constantly doing multis and stuff like that of course you're not going to get promo banned but if you're doing it in a way where we get a lot of messages from people saying, hey, I started match betting. I've made two, three, four K in my first month, um, but I've lost three of my accounts. What, what am I doing wrong? Like, is it even possible to sustain this for a long time? And fucking, of course it is. Like, we've got members who have been here for two plus years. So spring has been, uh, a, like we've just spoken about how much they're advertising, all their promotions, all their fucking affiliations and everything. And that's all they throw their money at at that time. Like, they don't care about anything else. It's a full on just, rampage on on revenue chasing through spring and then now we expect them to now hone that back into oh, not interview uh audit audit accounts mm. have a look through put more time and energy into that so we this is where our point of difference will come to the fore basically we're going to be now expecting our subscribers to um continue their focus on sustainability but we'll see other people out of our service other match betting communities i have utmost confidence that a lot of people are going to get banned after spring now and people get this false idea of seeing how much money you can make 
and and it literally is like a little bit of a, a poison apple. Like they see this profit and they go, oh, fuck you, I'm going to yeah, take that. I'm buy it. I'm just going to keep doing it. Keep now. doing it. And then bang, five accounts bound in, in two weeks. And then, oh, bang, another five accounts bound. And then all of a sudden they're done and, oh, match betting doesn't work for more than a month. And this is a kind of myth that um, is becoming more and more popular. And then now we're seeing, even though um, we and a lot of people probably, well, not us, we, we, people don't believe that we, we can sustain our accounts, like we're seeing that. Like how many accounts bands do we get from customers well what about what about matt hill yeah he's he's, he's had 21 accounts or something he's, a, he's had two 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 not, and they were like dodgy ones for those one listening year. not the actual matt hill race yeah well, we <laughs> called him we called him matt hill did the podcast yeah. with him the guy who had 6k personal loan but we've, we've, he's, he's made 50 grand over 50 12 grand. months or something and he's had two accounts well max he's doing the customer service for us and he when he introduces himself to new subscribers that fall under his banner yeah, that's he, not his real name either he he actually tells them <laughs> he actually tells them he's like yeah I've, I've been a subscriber for over a year he's like man uh, i heard a voice message he sent to somebody that's wanted to start on 100 unit size he's like man I'm at $100 unit size now. It's taken me 13 months to get here. And he's like, if you back in the defense and sustainability, do it properly. He's like, I've done everything day dot from correct. And he's like, I've lost one account ever. Yeah. And he's like, and I run $100 unit size. And, so he's like, if you want to do it properly, it's it's all possible. We, we don't make it up though. later. Yeah, like people probably think, oh, we're just saying that so that like you buy our shit. But no, if, but don't do it and you'll, you'll work, bucks, work it out yourself. Not, what the fuck's 90 bucks going to do? Like, yeah, correct. So, like this is the thing now. I think we're going to see a lot. Pe- a lot of people just get rounded up, and well, we're already seeing like other people come from. Oh, I was from this service, Correct. or I heard about you from somebody spoke about you guys in this service, or I used your calculators that I saw somebody talking about, and I've had to like flick through your content, and I didn't realize that I could keep my accounts for this long. I didn't know that it worked like that. And, and it's like fucking. It. It's the same people that say, for example, the platinum scored eleven hundred bucks once off is is too expensive, and they're making like a grand or two grand a week because they've just discovered this this massive match betting thing, but they can't understand that paying 1100 to sustain your accounts for 12 months is worth it. Yeah, well, that's I because that. until, until, unfortunately, until those until people get, get, yeah, until you get yeah. wiped out and you're like, fuck, I just lost five accounts. Well, I was yeah. making all this money off them. Well, we've had a number of members. I'm going to just name Bonus Bank. Bonus Bank is a, another match betting uh, company, which is a more general sort of corporate um, company which provides all this software. It's operating on large scale. Literally. Um, yeah. And they're charging, I think, 59 a month to basically give people access to software and, and stuff that basically tells you what to bet on. But what that stuff doesn't tell you is what not to bet on and, and the rules around how bookies will literally flag you if you're betting on in certain things and in certain ways and also grouping you with all these other people who have no idea. And we've had a number of those people come across just before potentially it's too late for some it is too late they've said i've lost all my good accounts my sports bet, my tab my 365 my lad all that's gone what can mm. you do and these are the ones we want to save so if you're watching this and you just learn about match betting come to us because i promise you we will and have more knowledge the than difference is like and what we say like we're not slagging off other pl- no, like, like no. at the end of the day they're teaching they're, they're teaching how to turn bonuses over yeah. it's absolutely spot on their software works definitely but the difference is like do you want to be doing it sustainably and at the end of the day, how much do you value your accounts? Because you can keep making profit using that software, so on and so forth, but you're not going to speak to people personally. Like it's, you know, it's just a big course that's been yeah. built out. It's all automated. You pay every month. You access the software with the thousands of other people that are all betting on the same things, putting their bonuses on the same things. Like on the same agency. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, Correct. yeah, yeah. Like here's how you can convert a TAB bonus at 80%. And there's like yeah. 700 people doing that at the same time. Fuck. How, why did I lose my tab account? Well, it's pretty obvious. Like, so at the end of the day, yes, that is cheaper to start. But if miraculously you make it two years through using Bonus Bank or any other one that part charge you a subscription, you've paid more than a thousand dollars. Correct. Mm. And you still don't have. You've never got the personalization. You don't have somebody to re- like JP's. You know, there's not a JP there sending you a voice recording at 11 p.m. on a Tuesday night, or mm. you know, there's not a community where you're like, hey guys, you know, this Discord, you know, ha- how are you guys making money at the moment? They don't have. There's not that kind of like personalization. Yeah. They just operate on a large scale. And we're not saying it doesn't work, but it's it's very different audience. So the software that a lot of people talk about and, and they, they rave about it and stuff and obviously do all that, none of that has anything to do. It's just about making profit and doing it in the most efficient format. So it would be like making a moon mobile and trying to 
make that work on planet earth or vice versa that the actual <laughs> software is designed for this world that doesn't exist where you don't get banned no nah, but yeah, this but, is what i'm saying so but like, like yeah this, this software works it doesn't it work efficient. in this world because you'll yeah. get banned using no, well, it it works as in you can make money yes but that's yeah, it that's, yeah, that's what it's made I mean. for yeah, yeah. so yeah. if i'm going to make you that and send it to you you'll make fucking heaps and yeah. you'll make it much quicker than if you want to we'll make the you. most money in one month and never do it again fucking go go every for bonus it bank. that's genius but if you want to make money like our long-term subs are making 5k a month yeah, or if you After want to do it for twelve months, or if you want to do it for more than fourteen months, when it then starts costing you more than it would to, you know. <laughs> and exactly. what's nice is being able to come back to it as well. We have some people who you know do it for a year, they make a stack, and they've still got all their accounts in hand. Yeah, it's like beautiful, mate. Come back in six months if you want. You're still ready to go. If you get all your accounts banned, you'll never come back to it. Yeah, you're no, like yeah, I tried this thing done. once. It was really cool, made but five grand, but you'll never get a chance to do it again. There's also the people in there that that like encourage these mates and friends and families yeah, accounts bowlers. which they know no better like yeah Correct. there's people in hustle squad who who and the system who are using other people's accounts yeah. but we don't tell them to do that oh well, they i've just seen see. ser- services pop up one of our yeah. subscribers sent us a message there's people advertising on facebook now that's legal i don't know to, like they're like if you pay if you give us your id so we can open up betting accounts it's like it's like old school was goodwill punting but now there's heaps of different ones and they're like give us if you give us your id we'll give you 200 bucks and we'll open up all these accounts in your name bank account in your name they're publicly doing this. Wrought all the bonuses. Yeah. yeah. Like, obviously, take... we know of people who do this, yeah, but to yeah. publicly do yeah, it, yeah. Jesus. Wrought, they wrought all the bonuses and then fucking give you your accounts back. Probably all Dead banned. Man well, but, this is the thing that people have to do when they have no idea about sustainability because they think that, you, oh, yeah, do it yeah. two months, three months, bucks. make 10 and grand, and then that's it. Churn and, and burn, but I guarantee you, like, it's so much more stressful doing that. Like having your own accounts, doing things completely by the book. Obviously, that's what you know. We we aspire that you'll be able to do following us and following the hustle. It is so much better. Like we obviously don't do it anymore, um, and you know we don't encourage people to use other people's accounts. But we know of people who do use yeah. other people's accounts, and we've heard possible. of some sort of bad stories that have come out of it. Um, and it's not worth it. It is so much more stressful. All of a sudden, you're putting trust in these other people that you don't know. There's money involved. It's just it's that that provides well, so much more say, stress and I've anxiety. Told, I've told people like publicly, I've been burnt by it before. Yeah, like, I've, Mate, I've I lost fourteen. Yeah, I didn't from, know if you guys wanted to talk about it. I yeah. lost I lost fourteen k from um, a guy who I used to play footy with, and mm. he basically just saw the money in the account. Yeah. and said, "Fuck I you." It. I've made. Like he thought I made all he this thought, money. They think it's profit. That's the because problem. Because the money yeah. goes across all these different accounts. It might and, be 200 bucks profit, but it's 10 grand. The yeah. account that it was using at the time um, obviously had 14K in it. And this guy was a degenerate punter, which I failed to identify. Um, probably just trusting people too often. And then, bang, gone. And I didn't really, I guess, understand what, how I should approach that back then. I probably should have gone a little bit harder on it. And then it happened again probably two years later and that was the final straw for me. That's kind of when I mm. stopped doing it and I had to go and chase a 19-year-old kid and basically not chase him, but I just <laughs> told him you need to pay the money back and he thought he was going to run away and I got that one back. But yeah, fuck that. It's not a, it's not a good world fuck to, that, to yeah. live in and it's... 100%. It's so much easier to just operate your own accounts yeah. and do it properly. Sure, it requires a bit more patience and discipline, but at the end of the day, you know, you not can't... Not to mention there's NDAs that potentially get involved. Obviously, some bookies like will send out a... Yeah, they're doing the stat decks now. Yeah, it's doing it's the, yeah, just the, not, it's sorry, just not worth it to, yeah. to run through all of those. Like, there are so many risks where there's potential where you're just going to have to write off a lot of your profit as a bad debt, essentially, because mm. you're never going to get it back. Yeah. But this is the thing as well. People will probably like arc up about that, hearing that we've done that, and we're not going to hide from it. Like This is how we learnt everything that we're teaching you yeah. so we made these fuck ups we've and made, we made every decisions. fucking mistake we've done everything that you can think of i promise you and that's not to say how good we are but when you're exposed for 10 years you're going to see a lot of shit and this is why paying us 99 a month you're not going to just get tips you're going to get all these different types of ideas that we're going to prevent you from making a mistake on or you yeah. might think of something and you ask us and then we save you from losing a thousand bucks and you're still going to make mistakes whatever. along the way like 100%. this is why we encourage people when you sign up first month start on a ten dollar unit size iron out those mistakes there's 95 percent of mistakes you'll probably make in the first month yeah. make those 95 percent of mistakes on a ten dollar unit size before you're up it get your confidence build your understanding of what's required and then you can look to really cash in but that learning process that you know we say takes a month took us 10 years yeah sort of thing Easily and every mistake and it costs us fucking money as well. Yeah, JP's talking stacks. about fourteen grand. Yeah, that's that. a fuck that's three a, grand, that sounds like three grand mistake on Betfair. There's already yeah. seventeen grand gone. Yeah, yeah legit. And just people, through through learning and like yeah. yeah, and myself and JP were associated with somebody else who punted our money as well. Like a yeah, massive, yeah, yeah, massive yeah, yeah. punter. That Preston. We were, 
No, <laughs> not Jesus. not Preston. But well, Preston's ripped off hard yeah, yeah, the fucking that's, the, that's the t- probably, Australian Open probably stats team. Yeah, just be careful. Probably won't. <laughs> well, yeah, that's so fact. That's fact. You're right. Probably won't discuss that on yeah. here. But <laughs> well, not anyway, me, like but we're, anyway, we're like there was another guy that we tried. that we knew was getting <laughs> was getting like too. was regularly getting like five ten k sports bet matches. Like yeah. 5k in 5k bonus 10k in 10k bonus and yeah jp and i were like fuck this is a gold mine but little did we know that yeah we had to leave money in there and fucking got punted and whatever yeah anyway so so moral of the story just keep your accounts open just Just keep your buddy your accounts easier if you do it with your own accounts and now let's move on to something a bit more relevant yeah even though fucking jp's gone to uh assassinate someone on the podcast (laughs) hopefully (laughs) save someone getting scammed but obviously we've just finished as we said we had today off we thought we'd film podcasts go through a few things and iron out What's gonna What's gonna look like going forward? But maybe we can just recap on spring. Obviously, there's still a little bit of spring to go. There's still some yeah. nice racing in WA. But you know, since September one, I think you might have the results in front of you, Steve. I roughly remember them off the top of my head. But yeah. maybe if we just want to touch on how spring's been for us, for the system subscribers. I know we usually just talk about general shit, but maybe we can wrap it up by giving ourselves a little bit of a pat on the back. <laughs> it's been a pretty good spring. A, and just a bit of a pump up for, for yeah. all the subscribers. Obviously, we've ticked over 500 subscribers, which is fucking elite. Like, it's yeah, so it's awesome. nice to have that community there. And then, yeah, obviously the results. So, Community's what I booming. posted, what yeah. have we got? We got 10, we did 10 weeks so far since September Well, I've, I've just had a look at, I've done from the 27th of August. We did have a good day, but I feel like that was a big first sort of day of spring. I can't, can't remember what the day was, but I feel like it was group one. So I've gone from there and compared the years from that day. And yeah, we've gone 108 units profit since the 27th of August up until so know, what's last Saturday. Well, the week weeks. before we went minus 13 or something. We did. That's right. We had our first ever losing 30-day period. Um, so we had to refund a bunch of people. I think that was about the last time we did our podcast probably. It was about the start of spring, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, yeah, from there, we've gone 108 units profit. But... That's 108 units on our official results, not to mention better given back, double bonus backs, not to mention sports bet given bonus yeah, back to fifth, bet to points six. bet to six. Yeah, yeah. They're all doing so. Most people were, I remember there was a few comments where I think we had that negative 5.5 unit day, 5.8 on the 29th of the 10th. And there was a few comments in the chat. People were like, oh, I actually went negative three units today or something like that. So those extra bits add up. So most, most yeah, followers. Yeah, a couple of those larger plays. Mate, ran, that, ran that fourth, day was, so they were like, yeah. oh, fuck. I Sorry to this. go off topic, but. I've never seen a losing day have zero people complain in the chat ever. That was, I reckon, because you sprayed them on that Wednesday. Good. You know that there was a cop ah, good. full grilling, but it was it was a good grilling, and the messages got Move across. On. Now they've great. woken up and they've probably all stayed on and got an extra twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah, already. it's unreal. Yeah, it's so people are so much calmer. I reckon there's still probably people behind the scenes that are seething a little bit, like on those days, like because you know it's that's just naturally going to happen. It's fine. Yeah. But, you know, you're spot on. You just realize in the long term, like that message from Shawnee was it before, you just know in the long term, you're going to win. We're going to have three out of 10 days that lose. It's just inevitable. Just deal with it. Um, but yeah, so it has been a good spring. 108 units, I think f- over the last or over the same period last year, it was like 88 units or something like that. Nice. So we've definitely gone better over spring, which is pretty good to see considering there was a comment I got from a new sub interested to hear your thoughts on it um, or either thoughts really he was like now that spring's finished what does that mean for the yeah, system yeah, since you know potential promos are dropping off which he's right they definitely are but keen to hear what you have well, to say about that well we've tipped for two years and we've missed one Saturday yeah well I think the other thing I was going to say is promos do drop off in a sense that the subs probably don't get that extra value with bonuses Correct. to fourth fifth but we don't record any of that like we're only yeah. recording bonuses to third so Sure, you might not have the points bet to sixth or better to fifth or sports bet to fourth or fifth. They may not be doing those as much or ever until spring again, but yeah. our res- that doesn't change in our results because we're always second to third. So the subscriber themselves may lose a little bit of their edge in a sense that extra bonus or extra yeah, profit the that they could be making, yeah. but the system operates year round. You look at through all of our all of our months there seems to be a trend i mean it's only two months so it's hard to say that it's a trend but in june it seems to be june may potentially be a, mm. a bit of a period where maybe we should look at shaking things up a little bit but reality is like we're averaging what 34 units profit a month that happens year round spring you said last spring we only made 88 so yeah we've had three month periods outside of spring where the promos aren't the same and we've yeah, still made more than 88. So it does, it, it's much of a muchness in it's my It's probably just a, um, yeah, it's going to be the same generally, but it's probably just a little bit of um, more focus on sustainability because Definitely. Yeah. people who have no idea stand out more among less punters. With regards um, to the yeah, results, I think it more just might be, we're going to be a bit more, we now have a bigger base as well, but we're going to be more selective in the races that we select 
to bet on yeah. because of we have a massive following and a we don't want our subscribers to get linked. B we're not just going to you know use some of the smaller bookies just to bet into well, races. I think we're the not small, chase units. I think the smaller bookies will probably fade off a little bit. Yeah. You know your your boss bets and your boss bet was doing all like all races at Flemington for a Swift, couple of Saturdays. Swift's there. already gone fucking like text bet style banning already. Have they? Yeah, yeah Swift's. I reckon so you know, which we somewhat, you, I mean, you touched on it before. You know, they've they've come into spring and they've tried yeah, to smash not, the market. We're not, share. we're not shocked. Yeah, yeah, no, we're not shocked by it all. Yeah. Well, you you reckon that like potentially better could and sports. Well, bet, that's my concern. Yeah, yeah, it might ruin the whole thing and and basically monopolize it. But I can't see that happening. I think there's still enough not people for, punting. Not for a few years. Not anyway. yet. Yeah, yeah, but who knows? We'll, we'll work with what we get. I mean, no the way the industry is booming, fine. providing the industry keeps growing, I think this. I, I saw a stat. A decade ago, the the profit in the industry has doubled compared to a decade ago. So if it keeps trending up that way of how much money is coming through the industry, then... The only reason that this would never be a thing about. going forward would be legislation. And I know yeah. you've said that. Like, yeah, unless yeah. the, the well, government... not give them any governing bodies, oh, really, the government, yeah, yeah. Unless they really, like, dive in and be like, all right, no more bonuses. Yeah, but... No more this, no yeah, more advertising. So, and then it becomes a lot less... So how much is the government making? Yeah, of course. So but that's where, not like, happen. during COVID, for example, yeah, they they dropped all these sports and AFL and yeah, NRL. Racing, not one like fucking race yeah, was yeah. Like was clockwork. taken off. Like literally, yeah, not one. <laughs> and, but, hey, yeah, we cool. cleaned up, so I'm not too disappointed by it. But. <laughs> one was postponed by a few hours, and then they still <laughs> ran it anyway. So, but yeah, it's like going forward. One of the questions was, "What do you see for the foreseeable future?" And it'll just be normal. Like, yeah. well, it'll just be punting punting we'll be betting as per normal and we'll roll in there'll be you know there's bo- boxing day is a big day new year's day is a big day magic million starts middle of january then you know the autumn carnival rolls around there's plenty of group ones like racing doesn't stop just because it's not spring racing sure some of the superstars won't yeah. be on the track but fuck me like we might not have as big as saturdays but fucking friday night under lights at the valley is huge yeah. in summer we'll be tipping some of those like Ooh, yeah. i just can't see us not yeah. Like, and for, for people that are potentially worried I did an analysis probably this time last year and I had a look at what our results look like in the bigger races compared to the smaller races and our bigger races are still profitable but less profitable than smaller meets so like group ones group twos we actually didn't do quite as well um, which we have taken that into consideration this time around um, but but that's, that, fairly, that's basically that's fairly normal that's like, fairly normal correct and so it's like basically it's like well there's not going to be group one group two races as you know as much over the well, until the you see a lot of those like so, tipsters on twitter and stuff like you know especially like melbourne cup carnival like we're entering you know the it's literally a bloodbath mm. really like if you can come out on top after the melbourne cup carnival you got fields of yeah. like 18 20 horses well, six dollars the field like if you come out on top at the end of the melbourne carnival but we didn't you, tip until that melbourne cup for example that oh, race no, oh, we stupid. tipped on the that day we went sense. minus two but yeah. this is what simo said before he subbed he's like if you guys can make me profit in the first week, because he signed up, I think, on the Friday before the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. And he's nah, like, if you make Derby me- Day, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Friday, Friday night. Cup, yeah. So he, Derby we got, Day was he got first Tuesday, Derby, Thursday, yeah. Saturday. That's what he's experienced so far. We've gone, uh, so Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So four days, we went minus six, minus two. Yeah. Then what did you get on Thursday? It was nine like plus, and eight, nine, plus, eight, plus eight nine, and then plus yeah. nine again. So we did but obviously that's not what our service is about it's not about a week but yeah so that was a very good result and over the, the last Wednesday week. that we had before he joined was Geelong Cup Day I think and we had a fucking really nice day there I'm fairly sure we yeah, had we five had a, or six units yeah, I think at Geelong Cup Day so, so yeah like at the end of the day it is a fuck like we're aware of that as well and we adjust things like you know there's massive fields or you know opportunities where we're like fuck we, there's not much plus EV in this race so we're not going to chase a bet. Like, we're not just going to tip. Nah. See, like, I think, you know, going forward, there's nothing to worry about. It's just going to be, you know, the system just keeps plodding along, doing its thing. And, yeah, excited. I'm already looking forward to fucking next spring. Hopefully, we've got a 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> and then it'll be a fucking... Well, you said at the start of this year, you'd time. love to have 400 by the end of the year. So, yeah, we've, so it's we've, nice to have. I reckon that. we've got, like, yeah, 470 probably locked in. And, it's, you know, 30 that have joined in, like, last week or so that will take some time. We're not going to keep all of them, but the ones that want to make profit will stay. So... Yeah, and that's another podcast wrapped up. Um, for the paid subs, keep an eye out for a potential little celebration. Yes, yes, yeah. like an in person. Hopefully in-person within the next. Yeah, hopefully within the next month. Um, we'll you got to have been a sub for a month. Yeah, we'll be able to. We'll, so we'll, sign up now if you want to come. We'll tee something up, but um, yeah, we'll put on some some beers and some finger food somewhere um, and give you guys a couple of weeks notice. KFC. <laughs> Phil no, will be no there KFC yeah. for no the KFC. fellas but uh, yeah we'll give you guys a couple of weeks notice and it's just a little bit of a thank you and we'd love to to yeah, get to meet a f- few of you in person I know we've hardly met any of our subscribers really it's pretty hard through yeah. COVID at the start lockdowns so on and so forth but 
yeah, as a community, it's been elite to grow. I would love to get lots of people in the same space to have a beer and a chat. It won't be like it won't be during a punting day or anything like that. It'll be probably an evening for a few beers for a few hours. So looking forward to that. Another good podcast. Good to see you, lads. And uh, I think Steve said he's going to go lay on the beach now. So maybe <laughs> fucking... Discount some... code? Oh, yeah. Discount code. Um, Steve Topless? Or what should we go <laughs> with? <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go with... Um, fuck, what, I don't know. What was the topic? Patience 10 or some D- shit. Double 10? Yeah, double 10. Double right. 10. Yeah, so the, Are we so legally the, allowed to do that? Do we need to check nah, it out? Right. So the promo Spelling code is... two E's if you want. No, no. <laughs> fuck that. Double 10. So double 10 is the promo code for today. So if you've made it to the end, listen to all our shit and you're not a subscriber, use double 10 at the checkout. You get a 10% discount on any sub month or longer going forward. So cheers for your time and we'll see you next time. Make sure you check if you are watching this. If you're confused about anything, we put every link and timestamp in the description as well. So, and, and once again, reach out to Tom if you want to ask us questions on Instagram. I don't know if you want to say anything. No, let's go to the beach. All right, ladies. See ya. Cheers, guys. She's lucky I looked at my camera. If I sit up, my head's not in the thing. I have to stay like this. <laughs> G'day, guys. Oh, we need what are we starting with then? Double? Double, 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 double. Double, double. Is it recording? The middle one. Oh, for fuck's sake. Are you serious? <laughs> nice. I just sat here going double, 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 double. <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about JP's fresh fade? <laughs> large, fresh fade, large. <laughs> He's like this. And pouting in the fucking camera with eight filters on it. Yeah, Animo was, it was weird as Animo jumped in an elite spot, was like sitting one on one and then finished like eighth or something yeah. for the rest of the... Got shuffled back a fair bit. Yeah, Moonga fucked it. I saw some stat where it's like, Whenever Animo settles in the first half of the field, it's like yeah, it's undefeated. Stupid. And then when yeah. it settles in the second half good. of the field, it's all right, but it's yeah. like nowhere near the But same. it's not, yeah, but it's, it's all right. For, it's shit for Animo, yeah. Hey, don't speak. The, s- the sniff fucking says <laughs> 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 <Nah, good enough. laughs> Fuck, if it gets too hot in here, you're going to have to text her to tell her to turn yeah. it on. <laughs> I'm just gonna blow my fucking nose. Well, we don't need one with this. <laughs>